Okay. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday, Friday evening to those that are here in the United States. Uh, if you're on the East Coast and it's, it's well, later evening, it's 10 o'clock. Uh, internationally, if you're over in New Zealand and it's uh, in the afternoon on Saturday. So just uh, a happy day to anyone out there that's watching this. This is uh, the fun table. This is round seven. I'm Mark Sugiyama from Eclectic Arts. And uh, thank you for checking things out. Um, for those that aren't familiar with this and how it works is that uh, I invite guests back that I've had a, uh, an opportunity to interview in the past. And uh, we just kind of have a, kind of like a virtual happy hour hangout kind of session. So it's nothing super serious. Um, if you've watched any of the previous ones on my YouTube channel, we've talked about anything from Star Wars to bathroom habits to <laughs> all kinds of things. Um, I do have questions that I pulled from the internet that sometimes I throw out to kind of get things rolling. Um, and just to kind of depending on the guests and the, the talkativity that's going on, then we just kind of roll with it. So um, we have set aside 90 minutes for this session, and sometimes uh, they go longer than that, just kind of depending on everybody else. Hi, Industrial Girl, how are you? Have a, hope you're having a nice uh, Friday night down there in uh, East Los Angeles. Good to see you again. And um, I, I think uh, it was really great having people like Industrial Girl in the chat last week. Uh, it made things very much more interactive. So if you are watching and you feel like it, even if it's just one comment, just so let us know that you're around, that's great. But if you like to just kind of use it as a, um, a podcast, I'm finding out a lot of people, they're doing other things while they're just listening to the, the banter <laughs> going on. That's cool, too. Um, for people that don't work in hospitality or retail or restaurants in, in the U.S., this is a three-day weekend because of Labor Day on Monday. And uh, so... Typically, this would be your your barbecue and everything else, dreading the heat that's coming. Yeah, I saw, you guys are already down in the in the hundreds down there in LA, and we're supposed to hit like the 90s here in Washington next week, which is like absurd for September. But yeah, you guys are gonna be even worse. So I, I don't envy you being down there um, in LA. Hopefully, you find a way to uh, find some air conditioning or central air or, or both, or however <laughs> however that works, that you can stay um somewhat cool but goodness because i saw someone's forecast and they're showing like 110 112 some other kind of things that la was going to be experiencing maybe you, you already are um but uh yeah it's kind of unseasonably warm up here and it's just going to get warmer from what i understand um no ac either oh goodness um yeah i, I feel for you that's going to be that's going to be tough that's what like when i was in college and my my little hovel <laughs> that i lived in didn't have AC, so I was making my trek over to the library and anywhere I could find AC, even to a grocery store, and just kind of hanging out and loitering. Um, and I, so I see my mom has joined. So hi, mom. Um, thanks for letting me know. And I don't see uh, an emoji that's inappropriate. So <laughs> that's all good. And it looks like everything's working on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. That's the other thing that I always kind of like to make sure uh, is going. And everything seems to be running the way I want it to. So. Um, yeah, I can let you also know that this is going to be the very first uh, Crowny Town. Hey, Peter, how are you? Good to see you. Hopefully you and your family survive the uh, first day or days of uh, online school down in Bonnie Lake. And um, uh, I do have my very first, uh, I go in my car and use the AC. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. My car doesn't have AC, so I'm kind of screwed <laughs> no matter where I go. Um, but this is going to be the very first giveaway that Eclectic Arts has ever done. So if you're somebody that is watching or listening to this um, fun table session, basically how this is going to work, that if you want to get a head start on any of this kind of thing, is that this, I'll just show it, if I get this right. So this came from WellGo USA. It's brand new. It's not coming out until September 29th of this month. And one lucky viewer is actually going to win this. I will be mailing it to you. And I'm going to make it fairly easy. All you have to do is uh, follow WellGo USA on um, Instagram. Hopefully, you're already following Eclectic Arts Media on Instagram. And then during this session, I'm going to stop at some point where it feels comfortable, and I'm going to ask a question. And the first answer that I see in the comments that's correct is going to win this uh, Blu-ray DVD combo. And I can say that it's got to be U.S. residents only. So if you're in Canada or Mexico or somewhere international, I'm sorry I can't uh, include you in this giveaway. Uh, no family members, so my mom and my cousin. <laughs> sorry, uh, you, you can't get in on this. But uh, Industrial Girl, you've got some really good odds right now because you're the only person I see who um, fits the criteria. And uh, again, that'll be coming out sometime, um, some, maybe the first hour or so into the 
into the fun table session. So again, hopefully everyone's having you know the, the best uh, Friday that they can or Saturday, depending on where you're at. Yeah, sorry, Peter. Um, <laughs> that's just kind of one of the deals when it comes to giveaways. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I really had a, a good time talking with the folks last Friday, which had to do with, um, I, I just kind of realized that some of these, there's a lot of coincidences that I thought about after the fact. So like, actually not last Friday, two Fridays ago, like with Leah, who's going to be coming on really soon here, and uh, with her guest, Anissa, two weeks ago, they both did a written interview beforehand. They both were, uh, did virtual interviews during the Alice tour, and then um, they were doing fun table sessions. And I just didn't even think about that. There was a parallel going on with them. And uh, last week uh, with John and with Nicole, it sound, I mean, it seems like something could really be kind of working musically together because she needs some technical know-how and then Paper Nova has that technical know-how so maybe they can kind of work together. Hi Dusty, good to see you. I totally understand that you're still working so maybe you can just kind of hear us through our talking and bantering. So now we've got two people that uh, right now can uh, <laughs> give you really good odds on on winning this, um, this Blu-ray and DVD. But um, so let's kind of get to the session. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot. I also need to promote myself because tomorrow I have a formal interview. So all of this will go away and the backdrop will come back like it normally does. And um, I have Mr. Justin Coughlin coming, who is a fantastic jazz pianist. Um, he is a protege of the late uh, Clark Terry, a uh, trumpet player, who is just probably arguably the best trumpet player ever. Um, he's also someone that has been under the wing of Quincy Jones. Um, so. <laughs> He's got some pretty good uh, people in his corner, and uh, I'm so looking forward to interviewing Justin tomorrow. That's going to be at 7 p.m. Pacific time, and um, he, he's been a part of a movie that came out in 2014 called Keep On Keeping On, and it was about his uh, friendship with Clark um, during Clark's last days. And so that's, again, 7 p.m. tomorrow, and then on Tuesday after Labor Day is done and everyone's back to work, and all that kind of stuff, depending on what your schedule is. I have Chloe Lowry coming, and Chloe is this freaking powerhouse of a singer. She's probably most known for um, touring with Trans Siberian Orchestra. She's been with them since 2010. She's had a very uh, productive solo career. And I've been trying to get her for a while, and our schedules never worked. I was actually trying to get her for the second leg of the Alice tour. But here we are in September, and schedules work, so we're going to make it happen. And so that's on Tuesday, but that's at 5 p.m. Pacific uh, time. And um, so it's going to be nice to have two interviews that uh, I really wasn't, again, I wasn't planning on. I was planning on just doing fun table session stuff and then interviews kind of where I could find them. But then these two opportunities came. I was like, man, I got to got to work with these. Um, I saw you met Elvira. Nice. Yes, I, I met her. Let's see, what year was that? 2016? Because um, sometimes she makes convention appearances as uh, Cassandra Peterson when she's not dressed up as Elvira. And that particular year, she decided to do it. Um, so not only did I get the photo, then I had her sign it as well. And she's like the nicest person ever. She's got so many amazing stories. You can listen to her talk for hours. Um, just, um, yeah, totally a, a complete sweetheart and very intelligent, very witty. And I, I can't stand up good things about Elvira and um, and her her actual personality of being Cassandra Peterson. So um, yeah, it was really good. All right, so yeah, we've got some people chatting and people. To, oh, Monster Palooza. Uh, it was at Crypticon Seattle here in Seattle. She made an appearance. Um, so uh, yeah, I got a chance to talk with her and all that kind of thing. But um, I don't know if I have anything else to mention. Oh well, next the next fun table number eight. Oh, you met her there. Okay, awesome. Um, that is going to be next Saturday at noon because uh, one of our guests is in Germany and uh, he's still working on his commercials and uh, his other things. So it was interesting trying to accommodate schedules, but we managed to get him. Uh, it'll be nighttime for him, so he could probably be you know, drinking as much as he'd like. <laughs> for us, it'll be like day drinking, which eh, it's still noon. You know, it could be like an early brunch or whatever on a Saturday. But then after that, we go back to Fridays, and Friday the 18th is already booked, and I've got two people that, um, if you watch the Alice tour, you've already seen these people, but man, getting them together is going to be a lot of fun. I was really happy that they decided to um, kind of take the plunge with the fun table and come together, and then the last Friday of September and the first Friday in October, 
those are almost completely booked now with the right guests in terms of actually yeah, with the right guests. And then after that, um, sounds like I will be going back on tour with somebody as long as my schedule works. There's been kind of a hiccup with my day job schedule this week. So I'm hoping that I can still go on tour for the third leg with uh, you know who. And then after that, we'll kind of see where things are at. So goodness, I just talked for 10 minutes and that's, um, I guess I had a lot to say. I don't know. I, I, have, I got some beers here, but I didn't have that much of them yet. All right. So yeah, Deutschland, here we go. My first guest with the Fun Table Sessions Round 7 has been a guest um, on the show during, actually during this time from the web series Life is Easy um, in New Zealand, a series that I love. If you haven't been trying to find it on Reverie, it is there. I did some poking around and it's actually under one of the um, titles that you need to pay uh, for like, I think it's only like five ninety five or something. There's tons of content on Reverie, but I thought it was going to be something that maybe you can just check out for free, but it's under part of the pay program that they have there. But anyway, um, it's a great series. If you saw the part one or the part two, you know that I've watched that series umpteen times. Uh, but she's also part of a, a daytime drama there that has a theater company and all kinds of other things. So let's welcome for the very first time our first international guest all the way from New Zealand, where it's Saturday. Next we have Chai Ling Wang. Hello, hello, hello. How are that you? That was a lovely intro. Oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, I, there's a there's a guest that I had on a long time well not a long time ago but back in May um, he does the best intros and I saw him do them and um, mm. I tried to do something similar so I'm so glad that you could join us and uh, be the the first international guest this is going to be a lot of fun yeah I'm honored it's now it's like two in the afternoon I haven't got a drink but I have uh, another coffee because just having a sleepy Saturday just been to the beach. Um, it's nice to be here. Great, yeah. Um, well, the, the beach sounds nice around about now, especially based on what people are saying that's, that it's hot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like borderline spring, so it's still kind of cold. Like a, It was like a jumpers and pants beach visit, but I was very determined to get out of my, get out of my house because it's been a while since we've been able to kind of roam around and like, you know, safely right, due right. to COVID. Yeah, no, it sounds good. And I think that everyone kind of does that when they have that opportunity to get, get some fresh air somewhere, then you take advantage of it. hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. that's right. You guys being in the other, in the other hemisphere, you're moving into spring and then we're moving into fall. So like our weather around here is, yeah. we got roughly a month of it still being good. And then it's going to start to go. Um, yeah. All right. So let's see. Um, let's talk about the second guest who was this is her second appearance on the fun table session she was with us two weeks ago and we saw her and her husband's amazing star wars collection of helmets and figurines and all kinds of other things that she had in her home so let's please welcome and she has an amazing voice i've said this a million times too and uh let's welcome to the eclectic arts virtual studio welcome back leah ingram hi leah Hello. hi <laughs> How are you doing over there in Ohio? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. How about you? How are you guys doing on the uh, the other side of the world? What? As we were oh. just talk, calling it earlier. Yeah, over here on the, on, the, on the on the west coast. Yeah, we're we're doing all right over here. I actually don't know too much about our COVID standing. I think we're kind of I think we kind of plateaued and we're kind of holding steady and starting to make it starting to shove that you know that curve down again which is good. Um, so, but um, that's the last, kind of last thing I heard. And then industrial girls asking about, aren't they Corona free there now? They're in different stages in New Zealand is my understanding what Charlene was just explaining yes. to the show. Yeah, so we've got, um, we've had a couple of outbreaks. So we're, we're never trying to, well, we, we know that we won't be Corona free ever probably because we're still accepting international Kiwis that have been living overseas to come back in and so that's where most of our cases are coming from um, And we have quarantine centers and we have lots of programs, but basically we're just trying to make it as traceable as possible So there was a recent what well, we call it like Outbreak 2.0 so we went into full lockdown at the first outbreak kind of got it traceable and under control Then we opened the country back up now we've got another cluster that's come from Auckland. So Auckland is on what we call level 2.5. Um, 
and the rest of the country is in level one, I think. So wow. it's it, there's different levels of extremity in terms of um, what you can do, if you can work, leave your house, if you have to wear a mask, etc. So Auckland is a pretty on a tight on a tight leash at the moment. So that's where I am. Got it, got it. And I see industrial girls talking about LA still sex with the cases. Uh, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're definitely in a good position, regardless of our, you know, ins and outs of our lockdowns. Yeah, that's what a what a crazy time. I mean, if somebody had told me, you know, a year ago in September, what would be going on now? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have been able to yeah, even yeah. fathom, you know, what we've been going through in 2020. Oh, gosh, um, yeah. yeah. But um, hey, let's bring, I have a third guest backstage, which I almost forgot about because I've only had two guests for most of these shows. Um, she is a veteran of this, of this fun table sessions. She did the first three right off the bat. When we got to the third one, that's when we really kind of started finding its footing and we were kind of just having fun with things. So that was really the precursor to what it's become and metamorphosized into now. Uh, she is a filmmaker, artist from painting and digital stuff. Uh, musician and someone that I've known for uh, about 11 years now and her husband was just on last week so let's welcome Christiana Wu as our third guest as I get her here. Hi! Yay! Yay. How are you Christiana? Good! I have my um, Sapporo here to go with my sushi and bento sign ready ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh nice. Wait, so you have a what did John have? He had an Asahi last week. I think an Asahi. Yeah, okay. we're really we're really close to the to the Iwaji Maya. That's like our closest grocery store. So we just go there to the Japanese grocery store and just pick up all the things all the time. <laughs> Got it. That's nice. My brother and his wife have been nice, and then when they make runs over to Iwaji Maya, then they ask me if I need anything, and then I go meet them to pick up <laughs> the stuff that they bought for me there. Um, and industrial, you're not talking too much at all. So that, that's perfect. I, I love the fact that people are. Um, putting things into the chat that makes it much more interactive. So you, you can't talk too much as far as I'm concerned uh, for the guests or for the people in the chat. <laughs> so um, you're drinking that. Leah, are you drinking anything? It is wine, my witch's brew. Okay, was that the same one from two weeks ago? Or a different one? A different one. This is the 19 Crimes Red Blend, not the Snoop Dogg one, just the regular one. Okay. But the Snoop Dogg one is really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got beer, wine, coffee. I mentioned pre-show that I've got this uh, five-year uh, Baltic Porter that I've been sitting on for a while, and I felt like a dark beer, so I broke this thing open. And um, luckily, it's really good. Uh, <laughs> sometimes after five years, it's already going downhill when you age beer. But this one is like completely blended together, and whoo, it's super smooth. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. And the Dutch girl, I just had sushi too. Okay, well, um, I haven't eaten anything. Well, no, I had lunch, but I didn't have dinner, so. Um, we know people are drinking. Is anyone else? Jameson on the rocks? Oh, ooh, that's right. You're the Jameson person. So we got somebody kind of heavily, not heavily, but just doing the, the spirits. And uh, who else? Anybody else in here that I'm noticing? Lots of people on Twitch, I see. Um, Dusty, what is that? Col Coltec? I don't know if I'm... I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but uh, hi, Tony. I see you, and good to see you. If you're uh, checking us out again, hopefully your phone battery doesn't die. <laughs> um, haven't made my bedroom run yet for that sour beer. Oh yeah, we talked about sour beer last week, and so hopefully you get a chance to um, try some some sour beer at some point. Okay, um, let's kind of go since we have three guests here, and we've got a lot of people in the chat, and I see there's people actually commenting from the different platforms. I want to kind of go around a little bit and have each person kind of talk artistically about things that you do, and even if it's something that you used to do, maybe you're part of a band, and then now you're doing something else, but just kind of what your artistic background is so people out here know. And uh, so, Charlene, let's start with you over in New Zealand. Um, well, my artistic background comes from theatre, so I'm a trained, I did an acting degree um, in Auckland, um, and then after that, me and my, the co-founder of my company, my theatre company, um, we were just mates at drama school, he's a Filipino Kiwi, and we both realised that we were kind of screwed when it comes to jobs in the acting industry, especially in New Zealand. Um, I found being in LA the last couple of times and connecting with the Asian American community is just mind blowing the amount of work that everyone's doing, the amount of connections everyone has. But in New Zealand, it's very, 
it's, more, it's that, but on like this level. So we created our own theatre company and started putting on work just so that we could survive. Um, so yeah, but now it's kind of built up um, and just hugely just expanded. And um, I'm the creative director of that now. So I write plays, I direct, I also produce, and we run programs for new writers and things. But I'm also um, working as an actor on New Zealand's only soap, which is a hospital drama called Shortland Street. It's very fun. It's very ridiculous. Um, a lot of work, but very, um, it's kind of iconic, you know, because we've only got one. So it's like, <laughs> everyone's trying to you know make it on Shortland Street one day is a little bit of a you kind of got to do it um, and I'm also writing for screen at the moment so I've just launched um, my web series Life is Easy which I co-wrote with Cole Jenkins my collaborator um, which has just gone live on Reverie which is a US based um, platform which is really exciting for us um, and I'm writing my first feature and doing a bunch of other stuff Try to try to pay the bills and do my thing. Yeah, no, that, that sounds awesome. And um, I was going to mention to you that uh, I did connect with your friend about his film Dead. Um, oh yeah, that's yeah. my partner Hayden. So they just uh, released their feature uh, called Dead in San Diego on Horrible Imaginings, the film festival. Mm -hmm. um, and they had an interview about it yesterday after the first screening, and it went really well. It was exciting for them. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch it. And I told it's, the world's so small. I was actually reviewing a different documentary and uh, from a company I'd never uh, distribution company I'd never worked with. And it was about this guy that makes onion rings. And uh, so I was just kind of digging around once I was done with that documentary. And I said, Oh, so who put this out? And I saw the distributor. So I went to their site. And then I saw dead on it. So I said, Oh, it's wow, just like, what they? yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, it was a number like 10, 10 yeah. 69 and something. 1091, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, how how weird is that? That, cool. <laughs> that um, yeah, the world really is small. But I'm really looking forward to seeing, uh, yeah. to doing a review on his film. But uh, yeah, I wanted to mention that I had yeah. I connected with him. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a good time. So, and then uh, Leah, let's go down to you if you can kind of talk about uh, all the things that you've uh, either done or are doing. Oh, okay. So, um, musically, I. Uh, was in a band for, let's see, started off in 2011. And I, I wouldn't even say that I'm not in it anymore. It's just that it's not as active as it used to be. Um, so that band is called Lee Birth. Um, hard to spell, <laughs> but um, if you can find it, um, yeah, we're, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Music, we're on YouTube, all that stuff. Um, I also have a YouTube channel of my personal, um, like ventures into music as far as just covers and a um, couple of solo project things that I've been working on. Uh, one of them is called Pray Tell. I do stuff uh, here and there that's specifically original and then um, the covers are more so on my YouTube channel uh, where Mark actually found me. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing and then I also do hair. So that's my bread and butter, my day to day. Um, but yeah, as far as like the art side of stuff goes, yeah, I've, I've been doing music my whole life and loving it and involved in it in any way that I could be, so yeah. Yeah, I think the other thing too that I would add is that what I found with your music too is that um, you have a lot of different interests. So it's not just like you're, you're not pegged into one style of music, you know, you're singing musical, you're singing uh, pop stuff, you're singing metal things, you're singing all kinds of stuff. So it's pretty cool that, that you pull from different genres. And uh, it also just kind of reminds me that, yeah, you're right. I completely found you on YouTube one night, just poking around. I was looking for cover tunes of stuff from Phantom of the Opera. And I saw that you had done Music of the Night. So I said, oh, it's probably not gonna be very good because most of the covers I've heard of that song don't sound very good to me. And then I listened to it and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> this is really nice. Who is this person? So I started going through your channel like I normally do. And then I found you on Facebook and we tried to connect because I wanted to interview you and which we did uh, as a written interview before the Alice tour ever happened. And then, um, yeah, and then you're on the Alice tour and everything else. So, and we talked pre-show and other people that have watched your, your first round table or fun table yes. two weeks ago. And it was that your, your number one fan is your dad. And, He's, he uh, just commented, he put a little peace sign. Oh okay. yeah, there he is. Yeah. Hi, Bill. Nice to have you join us. And, um, I should mention that. Okay, Dusty, thank you for explaining what you're drinking because I'm not up on all the mixed drinks, so that's that's cool. And Tony, no problem at all. I'm glad that you're here today. Everyone's got things that goes on with their schedules. 
And uh, so it's good to have you here. And uh, Christiana, how about you with your artistic background? Because you've got your hands in you know, multiple things. Sure. Um, I started off like growing up doing a lot of more like visual art. Um, I studied or I practiced, um, I took lessons for classical piano. Um, and I also used to do a lot of creative writing, such as short stories and poetry and stuff. But I really didn't apply any of that until like way later in life. I went to school for engineering and actually worked in, I still work in tech actually for my day job. Uh, but now as a graphic designer versus being an engineer, um, because I felt like what I was doing before was not as traditionally creative. So that's why I decided to go more into like design. And then once I got my feet wet in design, I was like, oh, you know, I really want to go back to art and music and writing and combine it all together into like filmmaking because filmmaking is like a great combination of all of those different mediums. So um, now I, I kind of do like a little of everything. Like I, I'm a musician for, um, I'm a singer for Paper Nova. Um, I, I would say I'm an emerging filmmaker. Like I just, uh, we have my first short, which is going to be in a couple of film festivals coming up, just with local ones. Um, and yeah, like as far as like the art side goes, like kind of using some of that uh, in my day job. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I know you, you do, uh painting when you've been feeling inspired to do painting. Um, hi, Alice TV. I see you. Thanks for dropping in. If that's uh, Scott, I assume that's Scott from Alice TV. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, and then as we kind of have mentioned before, you and I first met when I was doing model photography and then you, you modeled for me. So that's uh, kind of part of my background. I've been a long time musician since like what, fifth grade, uh, guitar being my main main instrument, played in bands. Um, more recently, in the last, I don't know, three or four years ago, I had a, a duo around town. Um, and then Eclectic Arts started going crazy with um, reviews and interviews and concert photography and the ballet and the opera, theater, musical theater, now films. Uh, the films came during the pandemic, which I mentioned, I think, last week. Um, so I just look at anything as, like, if I have an interest in it, and I think it's somewhat under this umbrella of artistic um, uh, output, then I, I try to pursue it. Um, and I don't like to look at things in terms of what uh, you should do this or you shouldn't do that or just stay in your little lane. I don't look at that like that at all. It's more like, no, I'm interested in this, so I'm going to I'm gonna kind of push forward with it and kind of see what happens. So, um, yeah, it's always, always nice talking with fellow creative people, and we have people from varying creative backgrounds. And, uh, oh, gosh, let's see. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, those are just hey, hey. So <laughs> let's so let's get to the question. Let's start. I'll start off with a question. Um, because Christiana has been here for three times, I purposely tried to grab ones from last week and new ones for this week, so that way no one's heard any of these questions. I, I found out I have a propensity to also pick ones that I like from previous ones. Like I like the answer that people give or something. So like the one about the pentagram, I've asked it like every t every time I <laughs> ever since it's been on the list. I'm like. I need to ask different questions. I don't need to keep asking the same things. Um, and again, feel free to jump in and if you're in the chat and you want to kind of you know put in your answer about what you, you know what you what your answer would be to this, then so be it. And anybody can go. It's not like um, you know we're not in class in a classroom or anything. I'm getting into my writing again. I like to promote local talent. Oh, awesome, industrial girl. That's great. Um, again, I saw that you've been. Um, you know, really, you just actually put something new up about um, something musical on Instagram that I, I remember seeing a post about something. All right, but let's look at a question. Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. Okay, we'll start with this since we're virtual. What's on your desk or table right now? Oh boy. Or something interesting <laughs> or, or goofy or whatever. My whole table. I have, I have one back here. I've got Halloween decorations on it. Oh, you can't really see that, can you? Well, okay. Well, the one next to me is closer. Halloween decorated lamp. And I have, let's see. So I have my water, my wine, my favorite book, um, a glass skull, a speaker, a pumpkin, an aloe plant, and then some coasters. And then I have these yellow sunglasses that I don't know how they ended up over here, but it's a little mod podge of things right next to me right now. <laughs> okay. Did, did, your, did your Halloween stuff just come out like the other day or has it been out for a while? Um, on the 31st, I believe is when we did it. Yeah. So we had our day. It was like kind of like 
this is our last day of summer slash first day of fall where we um, we had a little uh, fire outside and then uh, we made s'mores and then we decided we were going to put up all of the decorations and stuff and just you know I I'll, I would have them up all year round if I could but <laughs> but someone puts them away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and I was curious. Uh, I couldn't see. What is your favorite book that you have there that you mentioned? Oh, so this is. Let me pull this up here. Is it backwards or is it forward? It's um, the Once and Future King by T. H. White. Okay. It's the story of King Arthur. Well, there's multiple stories in it, but it's essentially that. All right. Cool. I have not read that book. It was actually something I had to read for school, and I don't know. It just stuck with me, I guess. So, all right, Trilinga Christiana. Um, I have my one is super boring. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I feel like you guys get up to like very flashy and awesome, and mine's just have a room. Oh no! Like usually, I work at um, my desk, which has like all of post-it notes like filled with all these different tasks uh, like you know green post-it notes just stuck all over the place that's usually what my desk looks like this is like our little um like this like this is like a hodgepodge of things like here like um oh, there's, wow. like, there's like a preamp a vocal effects um reverb like mixer all this all the stuff so just like just a sampling small little studio awesome Wow. So is that where I, I assume that you and John keep like all of the Paper Nova band stuff, like all the, it's all just down there in the basement? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Charlie, you don't have anything? <laughs> no, yeah, it's really boring. Um, well, I've tried to minimalize my room since I like kind of am in here a lot, but I, my desk is in the other room, but there's really nothing going on. As, as you can see, it's like two in the afternoon, three in the afternoon. So it's a nice light coming in there. They put bars on the window because they got broken into once. But yeah, it's just my little sanctuary. I've been in here for far too long, but <laughs> so it is what it is. Yeah, no. Um, and I, I, most people know that have been watching the Alice tour. I'm not actually at a desk per se, like where you would normally sit and do like work or whatever. I'm out at my dining room table area. So this is cds and random stuff from whatever and there's actually there's more stuff over here that i'm not going to show people my, my bloody walls which are kind of are kind of infamous <laughs> so, I, I guess i should ex i should explain yeah i should explain that to people yeah, that then. takes some explaining I yeah think. so, so I'll, I'll explain that for Charlie and anybody else that hasn't heard about that so um in 2006 in october uh, well one i'm a horror fan i love halloween it's always been my favorite holiday when i was a kid even more so than christmas and uh, so I wanted to do a horror shoot. And at that time, I thought about doing something inside so that we can go a little bit longer instead of going outside to do something at night. And I had three models that were here and I was blooding up my walls um, the night before. And we had chains and all this other kind of stuff to kind of make a set. And um, basically my laziness created this mess that's on my walls because if I had cleaned it properly, they would have been fine. But I didn't want to clean them properly. I wanted to clean them fast. And instead of taking the, the stage blood off, it just basically made it run right into the, um, the paint and a little bit into the primer. And so you can definitely see there's streaks of, well, it's not really, red, it's kind of pinkish red now, but if you get to certain areas like around the bottom, it looks blood red still. Um, and so when people first used to come over and they saw that and they didn't know me, they immediately turn around really quick. It's like, you better explain yourself before I leave <laughs> because it's like, what is this? Um, and I, what's, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I'm so used to it now that it doesn't faze me at all until somebody new walks in and they go, Mark, what's that over there upon your wall? Or what's on that, like your dowel for your, your blinds and stuff? I'm like, oh, that was just from a shoot from a long time ago. And like, but isn't that like stage blood or something? That I, I go through the whole story about what we did. It was a really fun shoot though. I remember we finished at two in the morning. It was probably about a seven hour shoot. Um, and we did all kinds of, we used garbage bags and the hallways got some blood in it. And we started off kind of mild, went wild in terms of the amount of blood that we used. And um, uh, yeah, it was probably one of the best shoots that I did. So, um, but uh, yeah, in terms of anything else, all this stuff is just when I do fun table sessions. Um, tomorrow when I interview Justin, 
then it'll be all flipped around and we'll, have, we'll see the backdrop and the eclectic arts magazines and all that kind of stuff like, like normal so and um i took an arthurian mythology class i need to read that book leah and joshua girls letting you know that she likes that book or loves that book yeah and and i don't remember i think um i'm trying to remember like what the exact like english class was that i had to read it I, it was in high school i believe it was an honors english class and it was like our summer reading book or we had like two of them that was one of them one of them and i uh i was like this thing is so big i just have to start reading it now or i'm never going to be able to read it because i was the type of person that would cram and just read the book like a week before the day like the day before and i was like this is like a jillion pages i have to read the whole thing like over the course of the summer and because i actually like took my time and read it um i actually really did enjoy it a lot so Okay. I, I remember actually. Have you read any Ken Follett books? I'm sorry, what? Have you read any Ken Follett? I have not. Like Pillars of the Earth and um, Winter of the World, that, that trilogy. It's like historical fiction. Oh, the one I'm reading no, at the moment. That sounds like right up my alley. Yeah. Yeah, it's really um, surprisingly easy to read, but they're really fat. And so you get through like half of it and you're like, I've read one book. Like I'm reading two in one. And you feel really proud of yourself when you finish yeah. it. It's like, yes. it's like everything's so descriptive. Every teeny little detail is in there. Yeah. It makes it yeah. so much better because it's like you watched a whole movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always fantasize about what, um, who I would cast in the movie version because it's. Yeah. And like going back to Twilight, we talked about it the last interview. I didn't like who they cast for like most of that. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I loved those books so much and I hated the movies. Yeah, yeah, it do be like that. Has anyone seen Mulan yet? Speaking oh my of gosh, no. it's like $30 yeah. to rent it. I was so it's so much. But I, I think it makes sense because you like most people are probably going to have a group of people around. So it's like, yeah. that's what we did last night. We we're allowed groups of 10. I don't know if I should be saying this, and I'm like, <laughs> someone's going to come arrest me. But um, we, because it was shot in New Zealand, and two of, because um, everyone in New Zealand knows each other, um, the two Kiwis that got cast are um, my friends and a, and a lot of our friends. So oh, wow. a lot of my friends are New Zealanders who work in film and, and theatre. And we were just totally gutted. We couldn't be there with them celebrating in the premiere or like pre party, after party, any of that stuff was just. We can't do it. So we organized a little Q and A beforehand and like hung out with them. And then we all watched it together and it was magical. Wow. Awesome. Isn't was it, it amazing? Was it just like- I loved it. It was great. It was really different to the cartoon. And I think if you're looking for like a Beauty and the Beast style, you know, like shot for shot remake, that, that's not it. See, but I, I think, think like it, even just watching the trailer, like I got like emotional. And I was like, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, Mulan. <laughs> Come at me like that. Yeah, yeah, no, it was really great. I think everyone did a really good job. Yeah, uh, I really can't think of anything to criticize about it yet. I, I need to watch it again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be a bit more detailed. But no, I was mostly really proud of Yosin and Zana. So Yosin plays the romantic lead and Zana plays Mulan's sister. Oh wow! It was, just, it was just so mind-blowingly wild to see them up against people like Yi Fei and like Ron and Donny and and Jet Li, and you're just like they're on the same level. Like we're just small people from New Zealand who don't. It feels like we're so disconnected with the rest of the world a lot of the time, and to see like your friends who like I was in a theater show with Yosin a few years ago. We did like a tour together, and it was like. That's my friend Yosef. What the heck? <laughs> Crazy. Wow. That's got to be awesome. And, and wasn't, I don't know, Charlene, if you know, but um, the lead who plays Mulan, wasn't she in the remake of A Chinese Ghost Story? Do you know that her history of her filmage that she's done? I'm not sure. She's mostly done Chinese films, and I don't really watch Chinese films. Okay. Probably good to get my fluency up a little bit more, but. I, yeah, I, I, I remember when the the trailer first came out, you know, before COVID and all this kind of thing. And I, I remember watching. It, I was like, I think that's the the actress from. And I have I have that DVD because I I love the original Chinese ghost story from 1987, and um, I've got the remake. I'm pretty sure that's who it was in. But people, okay, all these Alice fans. So this whole thing, not this whole thing, but there is um 
a tea time when they're asking people their favorite Disney songs and things to sing. And I didn't have an answer because I didn't really have anything that came to mind. Um, but when I saw that trailer from Mulan, that was the first Disney based film in a long time that I got excited about. Um, as soon as I saw it and then, you know, COVID happened and they had a delay. But yeah, now that it's at least available to, to purchase, to watch, it was um, the first film in a long time that I was actually excited to see, which I haven't done yet, but yeah. we'll see. Um, what is, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the, some of these comments too. Um, Dusty, you're asking about, you said you bought all of Paper Nova music on Bandcamp because today's Bandcamp day um, last time, so now you're looking for something new. Leah, don't you have some Pray Tell stuff on Bandcamp or no, just on Spotify? Um, I, what if it, if it was covered through CD Baby, I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to check. Okay, he was just looking for other things to, to help support artists today since there's no yeah, band camp fees today. Yeah, absolutely. And I was hey, trying to think off the top of my head. Does CD Baby do, does, does CD Baby distribute to Bandcamp? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I can't remember. I don't, it, I don't think so. We had to I, manually upload to Bandcamp. I was going mm -hmm. okay. I don't think that that was on there. Okay, yeah, and I, I was going to mention Dusty that you could look up uh, Zara Mahler stuff, but that was on Spotify too. I don't think she's on Bandcamp either, so I'm kind of drawing a blank of recommendations for other um, independent artists that you could uh, help support today. If I think of something, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I'm glad that you're still looking through all that kind of thing. Um, wow. Well, you know, that actually brings up something interesting. So, like, Chiling, you were talking about that uh, you started your theater company as kind of a, a means to start, you know, that there was a need for that type of uh, theater back in New Zealand. So how, how long ago was that? Um, 2013, so the first year out of acting training for us. So we were pretty young and didn't know what we were doing, but it was sort of the, wasn't the first Asian New Zealand content that had ever been on in New Zealand, but it was close. <laughs> I think of our generation, no one had made anything um, since, yeah of that niche i guess so it was okay. really we were fly, flying pretty blind at that point all right i was going to kind of ask um christiana you know with you doing your short for alvin was that something um that was hard to get off the ground here locally um did being a, an asian american woman have anything to do with you know any kind of stumbling blocks you may have run into I think um, maybe it just kind of came with the territory of being newer to the film community and not knowing enough people. Um, so like I was, I produced it, I wrote it, directed it and produced it. And it was just hard to find people like who would, you know, um, who would want to like, like it was an indie film. So, you know, we had indie film rates, uh, unfortunately. We still paid folks, but um, they were indie rates. So, you know, there were definitely people who were less willing to work on the, in, on that project because of those rates. And I think in some regard, I know that there are a lot of clicks here in the film community who do work on things voluntarily, like all the time, because they know each other. So I think it was harder for me starting out, but now I've started to really build that rapport with a lot of people and it's been helping out a lot. Okay. And, the, and you and I kind of talked too that, uh, you know, your network, depending on how, how much you want to kind of uh, massage those relationships is very vast <laughs> beyond Seattle, Washington. You've met quite a few people, um, even right now. I mean, <laughs> virtually you're meeting some people that even if you had an idea, you could easily offline kind of ping somebody and kind of see where things go. Um, it could be musically, it could be from theater acting wise. Um, and I think that's kind of where, uh, you know, there's always those kind of options. But yeah, you and I talked about, um, there's always those, those kind of gatekeeper people that think they hold the keys to everything. So you got to get their approval before you can do it. And it's kind of like, you don't have to use those people. Totally. <laughs> You, you can work around them. It might be hard, but you can still do it. Um, and because God knows I've had to work around people <laughs> just to kind of do what I've been doing here with Eclectic Arts. So, um, and then Leah, in your case, uh, and you kind of talked about this in your written interview, but with um, when you were doing Leave Earth uh, way back, God, how long ago was that? That's quite a few years ago for you. Um, and you talked about you, you had done some tours and you had some tour stories and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Did you basically stay in the Midwest and maybe go east? Did you ever, I don't think you came out west to? We didn't go very far west. We went south. We stayed in the Midwest a lot of the time. 
Um, and then we did go east as well. But yeah, the furthest uh, to the west, I think that we got, if I remember correctly, was like Denver. And that's not even that far. <laughs> Okay. And was that the whole band driving in like a 15 passenger van doing that whole mm -hmm. kind of thing? Yeah. I, I think some people don't understand that it doesn't matter if you're a theater person or a band person or you know anyone that's starting out in the arts that um, the kind of sacrifices people make to make their dream come true or whatever that dream looks like. And uh, I know, especially for bands being on the media side, a lot of fans think that Bands are always in tour buses. They're they're flying in jets. They're doing. They're living, you know, four star hotels and caviar. The rock and all star that. life. Yeah, <laughs> champagne and all that kind of thing. And then they see like, what's that? <laughs> they see like a sprinter over there, and they're all loading the gear in. If you see a sprinter van parked in a Walmart with a trailer attached to it, it's probably a band. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know um, one of the other tips that one of the bands was telling me that they love to get uh, memberships to like Planet Fitness, I think it was, because yes. you can bring a friend in. Yeah, and you can use their showers anywhere in the nation. There's Here's another good one for, for all the girls out there that would be touring. Um, if you're sleeping at a Walmart, which most of the time you are because you can park there overnight and nobody's going to say anything to you, um, a lot of girls, like, because the guys, they'll just be like, oh, I'm just not going to shower today, whatever. <laughs> They can go a day or two, but for us, it's a little bit harder a lot of the time, specifically because of our hair. And so I would go into the, I would wake up early, I would go into the Walmart, and almost every Walmart has a salon in there, and I would just go in there and get my hair washed. Well, it was like $10. Yeah, so yeah, there's there's another tip for any of those people out there. And yeah, that's true, and that's real go. Alice um, is in the White Rabbit, which is their 15-passenger van that they drive around in when they go on tour. And uh, you really have to love it. Um, driving 300 miles between shows, and yeah, maybe not having a shower. Or, you know. Yeah, haircut. it gets uh, it gets gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, on this. Yeah, I was going to look at this other question. Uh, I, I had some really bad questions last week, so I'm trying, <laughs> trying not to go to those questions. Let's go to something different. Okay. Um, Name one film you've seen multiple times. That could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like... Oh, I've seen x in first class, like, more times than I can probably count. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just love their film so much. And I, it's not really my, like, style or genre. I, I love X-Men. X-Men is my thing. I think, especially for a lot of minority people, it's just so resonant. Um, but X-Men First Class, I feel like, is just brimming with this unresolved sexual tension between Fazbender and McAvoy, and you're just like, there are like at least five points in the film where you're like, they should just patch, they should just make out, and they don't. And I think that's what, I think that's why the film is so like rewatchable, because you're just like, you feel so unsatisfied, like, they should just get together, like, it's just, anyway, I love that film, it's the first one that jumped to mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with my artistic sensibilities <laughs> at all, but I just have watched it a bunch of times. <laughs> um, I think I've seen the Harry Potter movies more times than I can possibly count, as as well as I already went on about uh, Star Wars at some point in time. Um, so those those two like movie universes, along with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, uh, Disney in general, I'm a pretty big junkie. <laughs> Um, I could not like it holds up after yeah. after many. It's, it was shot like what like like ten, released like ten years ago. Oh yeah, even longer than that probably. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it very holds up. yeah. It was it was very. Um, I feel like to be a live action Disney movie that was that. Um, I don't. I don't know. I feel like it kind of set it. It set the tone for a lot of the live action Disney movies that came after that, including the Marvel movies, um, and like just the the general humor of like the Marvel movies and like the newer Disney movies that are coming out, or the Star Wars movies that you know once Disney took over Star Wars. There's a lot of that same kind of like, it's funny and it's got this humor where it's like anybody thinks it's funny. It doesn't have to be you know a kid watching the movie. It doesn't have to be an adult watching the movie. You don't necessarily have to know anything about Star Wars and you'll think it's funny, you know? So it's like that whole, like, I don't know, pretty much everything that I enjoy is all like within the same 
you know, world in some way, shape or form. But yeah, I just, there's, there's so many movies that I could just go on and on about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it, for me, it's funny because I'm actually not a film buff, even though I am trying to get more into filmmaking. Um, so my default answer is like an oldie, but a goodie. It's probably one of my favorite films. It's a, it's the sound of music. Um, and I've watched that so many times, you know, I sing along all the time and I adore Julie Andrews so much. Okay. And I see people are talking about, uh, what is that? Oh, thanks, Tony. So any friend of Mark or Alice that's in the Pittsburgh area, you can always stop by and use his second shower and get a hot meal. So if any <laughs> band goes on tour, if you're uh, scouting out locations or something, you can you can uh, hit up Tony and do that. And um, I know I saw American, uh, um, not American, Mary. Yeah, what was her? Let me go back to that real quick. Um, but yeah, I think, so when I think about like the Harry Potter films, I go back to when I was a teacher, because when the first film came out, I took my class to go see it, because we had oh read the gosh. book. We read the book. So I, I got my my um, principal at the time to give me the A-OK -okay to spend the money and, and bring the class. I said, hey, we just read the book, why don't we go see the film? And I just remember my students saying that they were kind of pointing out all the discrepancies <laughs> between the book and the <laughs> film. And, I, and but they were doing it during the film. So I'm like, hey, we can talk about this later. Don't talk about it during the film. You're bugging the other patrons and stuff here. There. But Mr. S, the, that didn't happen. This other thing didn't happen. I'm like, I know you're right, but we'll, we'll have a post movie yeah, discussion, yeah. Um, you know, when we get back to the office or whatever you want to do. Um, but for me personally, one of my favorite films, and actually these students in South Seattle would have said the exact same thing. They know that one of Mr. S's favorite films is Glory from 1989. Um, about the, the 54th Massachusetts with Denzel Washington, and he won his first Oscar for that role. Yeah. And um, I never tire of watching that. I've got several VHS copies, a Laserdisc copy, DVD copy, Blu-ray copy, a poster. Um, and at the time, I liked it because historically, it was fairly accurate in terms of the costuming. Um, not so much about the, the narration and you know the story that they told in that, in that film, but it was better than what you would have saw back in 1989. Um, but I still remember the trailer was probably one of the worst Mission, um, bringing together a film and music for a trailer because they're using um, Carmina Burana to play against the trailer. And it's kind of like, why are you playing that music? You know, which most people associate with Conan the Barbarian with, <laughs> with the Civil War trailer. And I, even for me, I'm like, huh? And then you see the film, it's, it's got nothing to do with that. It's a whole different time period. Um, but I still remember someone made a really poor choice of putting that music with that trailer. Um, but that's one I've seen umpteen times. There was one of these questions in here was saying, can you think of a TV show or a film that you used to be embarrassingly good at quoting lines from? That was one of them for me. Um, I don't know if anyone else has got any like TV shows or films that they used to sit there and like embarrass their friends by just <laughs> doing stuff from the, the film or the show. I could probably recite the original Disney Mulan cartoon from like top to bottom. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I was young. I have three sisters, and we all just we were obsessed. It was horrific. <laughs> oh man, we we did a lot of movies. We actually used to watch these um, Mystery Science Theater three thousand movies. It was like that TV show where they took really awful movies and they would just sit there and like say funny stuff over top of them. And my sisters and I would just for hours just like be quoting these movies and just like even now in everyday life like we live in three different completely different areas and when we do actually like finally get together it's probably once a year and that's what we usually do is we're quoting like these really mm -hmm. old just like stupid funny yeah. video things it's like canon right like your in jokes are just set from like a yes. certain age and then like you just they just always come up unexpectedly yes like, it just never leaves you, weirdly. <laughs> for better or for worse. Yes, truly. You're kind of like speaking another language around other people. And like, oh, inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> you had to be there like 20 years ago, but yeah. Yeah. You well, had to see it. Lee, I see your dad said Young Frankenstein. Uh, yes. And Tony just said Star Wars, Goodfellas, Enemy of the State, Hackers, Euro Trip, Office. What's Euro Trip? I don't know that one. Euro Trip is what, like a 90s or early 2000s movie with, oh, what the heck? What is her name? I mean, it's a lot of people. Hold on. 
Let me pull up the cast list here. <laughs> okay. Goodfellas is a super good movie. Yeah, I, I saw Goodfellas several times. Saw it in the theater when it came out. 2004. 2004. Um, Michelle Trochtenberg. She was in, I don't know. She was in a lot of stuff. Okay. Matt Damon's in it. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I know one thing that's actually come up during some of the Alice interviews was that um, I was a huge Seinfeld fan. Um, so I, I don't know how many of those shows I used to know lines from. Um, I used to know Frasier lines pretty good, too, from the 90s. And because I would just watch those obsessively or like if I was sick. So back before you were binging things like you can now, then I'd have my old VHS tape and I'd be <laughs> watching, rewatching old uh, sitcom kind of things. Uh, movies, my parents can attest to this. I used to know a lot of um, Dances with Wolves, the Kevin Costner film. I, I used to know a ridiculous amount of I don't. I couldn't do it now. I don't remember. I haven't watched it in a while. But I used to just watch certain scenes of certain things from TV or film, and I would just probably drive my family crazy because I would just go over and over. Uh, there's something about this that I really like, and I'd go back and watch it again. And so if I was ever sitting down and saying, I'm going to watch a film, they knew I wasn't going to watch the whole film. It was watching certain scenes in certain <laughs> sections that I just loved. So um, I see people talking about Buffy and Harry. Yeah, the, 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 so the actress in Eurotrip was in those. She was also uh, in that... I think there's a Disney movie called like Ice Princess or something, where she was like an ice skater. Okay. And then, Christiana, is there anything that you used to um, have memorized or sit there and break out around your friends or family? Um, not particularly. I feel like, you know, I watched like a lot of reruns, like, and even during the time that it was on Friends, for example, like, uh, and even, even yeah. recently, um, recently we started watching Cobra Kai, for example, and like, just like mm. even hearing like all the throwbacks, you know, like all the throwback dialogue and the wax on, wax off, or like all of the nostalgic stuff was like, it's amazing. Like, um, so I think I inadvertently probably do quote a lot without even realizing that it's been from a movie or a TV show. I just hear other people say it and then I just kind of pick it up and just say it too. Let, let me ask you this since you brought up uh, Cobra Kai, which is related to the Karate Kid and those that aren't familiar with the Cobra Kai series. Um, have you been, Christiana, have you been to um, Kona Kitchen? So have you met Yuji, the owner? Oh, I don't think so, okay, unfortunately, so, yeah. So so Yuji is the, um, he was the bad guy in Karate Kid 2. Oh. So the rumor is that he's coming back for season three of Cobra Kai. And so he lives here with his family. So oh I've met gosh. him several times. And I guess I can let people out there in the chat know I've been trying to get him to come on the show. <laughs> so he can talk about his year, you know, his claim to fame doing Karate Kid 2. And um, he was in Pearl Harbor and like a sequel to The Crow and a bunch of other things. He did love wow. Whistle too, but he owns, he, he owns two restaurants here locally. Um, so That's awesome. I mean, I, did, actually, yeah. I ran into, I'm sorry, and I ran into him at Jake Shim at the Coro one time too. He was there with his wife. So super, super nice guy. Super nice. He's terrible in that movie though. <laughs> <laughs> he was so mean to Ralph Macchio. <laughs> um, okay, well, I see other people are quoting stuff from from movies, so <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can kind of move on from that. Um, hmm. Well, I know what I would say to this. What's the best or worst thing that happened to you today? Oh, man. Okay, we waited, like, there's this place that just opened, like, a co it's like down the street and it's uh it's like a cookie place but they're open until midnight they're supposed to deliver they couldn't deliver here so we were like oh it's too far we have to go pick up no big deal but they've only been open for two days so today is apparently like the day that they're doing like free cookie day and we sat there for i'm not even kidding like almost two hours <laughs> or no not two hours it was like a little over an hour uh, for these cookies, which we ordered ahead of time, and then we went in through like the like pickup or whatever the heck it was like line, and it I mean it just took forever, and then they weren't that good. <laughs> Nick was like, I can't believe we no. waited an hour for these cookies, and they're not even that great. I was hoping it was going to be a good payoff for you, but it sounds like it wasn't. Well, that's why it was the worst. I think it was like the best part of the day. There was so much buildup and I was so excited for the cookies. And then I was also like, 
oh yeah, free cookie day, awesome. But then we got there, we had to wait forever, and then they just like weren't great. So I see and simultaneously the exciting and not exciting parts. Okay, so you waited over an hour for cookies that weren't any good. No. Um, anything else from other people, good or bad? I mean, um, well, this is a pretty good one. Are you go, Christine? Oh no, no, go, go ahead. A bit of no, lag. no, go, go for it. Um, I so I run my company still alongside with the other stuff that I'm doing, and we've expanded a little bit, so I've got a few producers on board as well which means I don't have to do literally everything, which is great. Um, we applied for some funding from our local council um, to run some writing workshops for um, emerging Asian playwrights. So over the past few years, we've run monthly events called Fresh Off the Page, which are live play reading events for first time writers. And it's basically kind of like a very, um, it's a deadline that's based on social pressure. So they each get given the deadline of the of the live play read. And then we book them all throughout the year. And we're like, well, I guess you have to write your play now. So they pitch us the, the treatment. And then we're like, be ready by the time we go live. Because, you know, you'll have an audience of 60 people in front of you by wow. that point. So it's, it's sort of like an incubator. And we give them, you know, mentors and dramaturgs and things like that. So we've done that for people who are sort of mid-range, like they've written some stuff before, but maybe never like a full length play. But we kind of identified a gap in the market, which was, well, a gap in people's needs, which was just people on that, people on the emerging level that want to just get a little bit better at their craft and what they, you know, what they can do. And then people that they're like below emerging, like absolute 101s who have never written anything before that have no idea where to start. So we applied for some funding to do a two-tiered writing workshop series for those two streams, um, and we got the money. So that's going to go ahead over the next few months and give something for people to do that can't leave the house and are creatively a bit stifled at the moment. Um, it'll be free, so it's for Asian New Zealanders, and we'll start the application process soon to pick who's going to be doing it. That's awesome. So that was Congrat a very good. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks. That's awesome. I, I love hearing things when um, young up and coming artists are going to get a chance to you know, break into their craft. And that anytime you can get that helping hand, you know, it's so much the better, uh, particularly in this, this niche that yeah. you just described. So um, that's awesome. And I see Tony's talking about you turned in edits, photo edits to a client and love them. That's awesome. Always when the client's happy, then you're happy. Um, help my neighbor start to chop down a tree. Okay. And of course this tonight. Oh, cool. That you're here with us during the fun table. All right. Um, and uh, Christiana, good or bad today? Um, I think I could do both. So today the bad thing was waking up hungover because I had a virtual happy hour yesterday and had maybe one too many martinis. Um, and then today also, like the good thing that happened, and I just want to like kind of almost piggyback off of what Chai kind of mentioned about writing. Um, I was really stuck on a part of a script that a new script that I'm working on. And then today, you know, after, I don't know, like maybe like a week of like, cause I had written about 45 pages and then I didn't like 25 of the pages and went back to page 20 and like started a new route um, and was stuck on it for about a week. And so today I got unstuck and was able to write a few more pages. So that was really nice today. Good. Yeah, nice. well, that's, that's always good to get unstuck, especially when you're, when you're trying to write something. And I definitely know about that. Um, and I guess for myself today, well, like I mentioned pre-show, I think the Chai Ling that um, I've had a couple opportunities that have come my way during the day. And um, it's kind of nice to know that I have something to pick from because it was supposed to be one thing and now it looks like it's going to turn into something else. Um, so this whole week's just been kind of up and down and all over the place. But that, that was definitely a good thing. Um, I don't know if there was a bad thing today, other than it's too it's too warm. <laughs> I, I think everything else has been good, um, and I'm looking forward to giving away this this blue. I actually haven't watched it myself um, to to review, but um, yeah, I, I I think back to that. I've got there's all these Alice fans right now that are in the chat, and um, 
I think back to the tour report I did after the first leg, and I'm still not happy with it. I, everybody knows that I just put it out there because I couldn't figure out what else to do with this thing because um, it was like 37 pages. And then I chopped it down to 17 pages because I took out a whole other narrative about what was going on with me personally during that time. And I still have that part, which is probably never going to see the light of day. Um, but I, I just I, I think back to how I was so stuck with that. And then um, I, I moved on to the, the second, well, not the second leg, but the interim shows. And there was something that just kind of sparked again. And the writing was back. And thank goodness it was back because I needed to review 20, 25 movies at the time. <laughs> um, I've mentioned this before that I think if you're a writer, then you need to be reading, and I haven't been reading enough. Um, so I think my writing is starting to suffer mm -hmm. from that. So I'm trying to put all these pieces together. And I was actually, something that came to mind what Charlene was saying, and also with Christiana. Um, Christiana, have you ever thought about doing any kind of writing for the theater, not for film? Oh, wow. I would be very new at it. <laughs> um, I. I would be interested, I, I'd be intrigued, but I I would have to um, a, adapt and shift and learn, you know, how to do that properly. I, I, I'm always um, admiring live performances because I think it's like a completely different, uh, it's like, you know, much different, right? Uh, feel and vibe and it's very impressive to always see what can be done in that live performance, you know, in, you know, five minutes to a whole, you know, hour and a half or longer. It's really, it's really cool to see that unfold in front of you. Okay. And then Shailene, have you done film work yourself? Yeah. So in the last few years, I've kind of been transitioning more into the film side of things, both with my company and with my personal stuff. Um, yeah, so there's a great organization that's popped up over the last maybe three years, which is called the Pan Asian Screen Collective. So I'm on the board of that as well. So it's sort of like, I think we notice a lot of crossover happening between the community and artists that work with Proudly Asian Theatre, and then, which is my theatre company, and then um, people who also want to work in film because our industry is so small. All the Asian people kind of like, have these fluid skills that kind of shift between the two mediums so lots of people that we're discovering that are working in theater actually would be more suited to film or want to work in those areas so kind of identified that that the need for that niche and so i guess my own practice has been influenced by working across these two different platforms um but yeah life is easy was the first long-form web series that i've made but um at the moment i'm writing a feature film which has um, been really fun and challenging but I've got an Asian American um, uh, writing mentor for that because I couldn't really find anyone that was suitable in New Zealand so I'm excited to to do more work in the film arena for sure I did a short documentary called Asian men talk about sex which is three minutes long that did really well so that was kind of my first and yeah, just continuing to write mostly. Okay, all right. And then Leah, with you um, definitely having certain books that you like to read, mm -hmm. um, do you ever do writing besides, um, lyric, besides lyric writing for songs? I feel like a lot of my lyrics actually begin with writing. Um, and I kind of take things from other things that I write. It's, it's kind of hard to explain it, but um, I have a lot of note sections in my phone and um, I do sort of like a milk and honey style writing where I just put like little snippets of something here and little snippets of something there. Sometimes it's longer stuff. Sometimes it's just like a, a sentence or two. Um, but outside of that, I've, um, you know, I've considered starting a blog of some sort just because I'm a big talker. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've thought about, you know, taking up some form of writing just like freely um, besides, you know, music, writing music and writing, you know, poetry or writing a script or doing anything, there, there's so many different ways to, you know, write and different forms of it. And I think that I've kind of dabbled in a few here and there. Um, when I was in school, I was actually, <laughs> I was a nerd. I was in this uh, group, it was called Power of the Pen. And we actually went to like writing competitions and out of like, I think there were like, five or six schools at this thing, I came in like sixth place or something. So I was like mm. 
crowned nerd of, <laughs> of this like writing thing. So like I do, I, I do enjoy it. I think it's a, uh, there's kind of a time and place for me depending on like what style of like writing in general that I feel like I want to do. Um, a lot of it, um, I try to transfer to music in some way, shape or form though. Okay. That's, that's interesting that you are um, in that writing group or club. I, I got recruited fourth grade, uh, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Stevens, to remember her name, um, signed, put me in some group from our school where they bust us off to a, a local college and we would have, we would meet with other elementary or junior high or high school age students, uh, whatever your grade level was. And you all kind of talked about your writing and you had to do a writing assignments and all this kind of stuff. And um, I remember I wrote my story about a deer I don't know what happened to that deer when it got lost in the woods or whatever, but I just remember going to the college, um, your lunch, you got like a brown paper sack lunch, and I was so short that I couldn't reach the counter <laughs> to get, it, get my lunch off the counter. And so this college student like helped, you know, grabbed it for me and gave it to me down here. Um, and I also remember that Mrs. Barry, who was the person who was our librarian that uh, brought us there and brought us back, I got sick in her car. Um, it was it was a Vida van, and so the fumes or whatever. I was sitting in the back of her van. And I wasn't feeling good, and I told her I don't, I don't feel very good. So she pulled over so I could go get sick outside. I didn't get sick. I got back in the car, and that's when I got sick. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was one of those writing trips. So I remember the next time we went back to the university, she's like, "Mark, you're gonna ride shotgun right up here in the front. We're gonna have the window down." <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Um, but I do remember that's kind of the, the start of my writing that um, someone back then in elementary school thought I had some something to give or offer as a writer. And so it's kind of interesting that you know here we are in 2020 that um, I'm I'm writing for certain things or actually a lot of things actually and. Um, that's uh, a blessing and a curse at the same time. Um, I finished my next article from Monday, so that's good. Okay, industrial girl, that's cool. I'm glad to see if we have some people writing and keeping things moving. Um, and uh, you know what? It's a little past our hour, so I think this is a good time to, we talked about movies, so let's give this movie away. And uh, if you were just joining us and you missed out on what I mentioned, um, you need to be a U.S. resident. You need to be not part of my family, so my mom and my cousin. You don't count for any of this. And uh, but other than that, if you could please follow Well Go USA on Instagram, uh, follow me, which is Eclectic Arts Media on Instagram. Those are the two things you need to do, and you can do it after we're done. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to go check though. And here's the question. So the first comment that I see that has the answer right, then you're going to be receiving this this blu-ray here and i will be the one that will mail it to you next week so and you're going to get it ahead of time again this doesn't come out till the 29th of september so you've got a, an advanced copy the question is what country is chai ling in this should be fairly easy so i'm going to keep looking at comments as people are doing what they're doing <laughs> I have so much respect for writers in general. I hated English and writing in school. Yes, you know, so I was the opposite. I loved English. I was not good at math. Um, I was not a good math person. Um, and it could have been based on the people that were teaching me. And if I don't see, oh, Dusty, you, you got it. So Industrial Girl, you're right after him. But Dusty, he didn't write it correctly, but I know what he's saying. It says me, Zealand, instead of New Zealand. If I don't, you know, auto, auto corrected. So you got the answer right. So Dusty. You are the first winner of the first giveaway of um, this lovely film. And uh, it's based on historical facts, supposedly. <laughs> so we're going to find out. But uh, if you could DM me, um, either through Facebook or Instagram with your mailing address, I will get that out to you next week. So congratulations to you, Dusty. And uh, you're a longtime supporter of Alice and everything that uh, Eclectic Arts has been doing. So that's awesome that you get a chance to do this. And once you get it, let me know what you think of it, too, um, good or bad. I would love to know. Um, I've been watching and buying things from WellGo USA for years. Um, if they were not doing what they did over here, most of the Asian cinema, I would not see. I'd have to get the imported version from Hong Kong or from Japan or Korea. And it'll cost like twice, three times as much. So it's really awesome if they start coming on board maybe 10, 15 years ago at least, where they started bringing films to America. That was awesome for me. And I've been into Asian cinema since again, like the mid to late 80s. So all the old VHS stuff, I used to get bootlegs of things and Jackie Chan and Chow Yun-Fat and all that stuff. I was, I was one of those people. So um, congratulations to you. Let's move on to a new question. 
this is actually a good one for me. How well do you know your neighbors? I don't. I mean, my mother-in-law lives like a couple, I guess she, she lives on our street, but our street, it's like, like there's a cornfield between me and my neighbors. So like, there's a lot of space. Um, I think there's one neighbor that like my husband knows pretty well because he brings us apple cider and he'll kind of hunt on our property every now and then. <laughs> um, and I think he's brought us like deer jerky or something in the past. Um, I know them like somewhat, uh, but yeah, other than that, we're really, really spread out actually over where I'm at. So I don't really know anybody here at all in this like little, uh, even on my street. <laughs> When you mentioned that you have a cornfield separating you and that your one neighbor hunts on your property, <laughs> how, how big of a property are we talking about? I'm trying to picture something in my head. Um, so we have five acres um, and most of that is woods. So it's kind of like um, we have grass that goes down a decent amount and then we have woods that there's like a little creek that kind of runs through um and then we have like kind of like a, what looks like a little grass field that leads up into this like cornfield which is technically not our property and it's also not our neighbor's property somebody else owns like just this random lot that's in between us and it's got i think this year actually it's lima beans last year it was corn and i think they alternate every year or something so it's just it's so yeah. weird because i grew up in a neighborhood in a suburb and coming here i'm like i don't know like there's like cows on my street <laughs> <laughs> okay no, sounds I like new zealand <laughs> <laughs> wow okay well that explains why you may not know your neighbors as well because the vastness of yeah know, they're yeah. far away yeah, um, Chai Ling or Christiana, how about yourselves? Um, my neighbors are pretty close to me. I have to be careful because I used to live in a place where I didn't have neighbors close to me. I live on quite a big property and I'm always like, I just don't really give any fucks when it comes to getting changed in the morning. And I always forget that my neighbors are literally there. And I'm just like, no, no, no. Um, and it's a family next door as well. So I, I always catch myself and I'm like, okay, keep it PG. But um, no, this is a really lovely Vietnamese family that lives next door and they they will come and steal our flowers, which is sweet because they have kids and I think the kids just get so bored, Aww. especially over quarantine. But we've got this like kind of stretch across like a property, which is like all these lilies grow and they just come pick them. Um, but they came over on my birthday when I was having a shindig like pre COVID and they bought like they bought over all these like spring rolls that they made and they bought flowers it was super sweet so i'm like yeah steal our shit like we don't we don't take care they have kids you know you can kind of get away with most things if you have cute kids nice but yeah the, the guy on the other side is a total asshole who's doing construction <sighs> at his place at the moment and like you know it's locked down you can't leave your house and he's just at it like eight hours of the day and sometimes it'll be like 7 or 8 p.m. and he's using his skill saw and you're just like, like, why? So, yeah, he's a dick. But, um, <laughs> you know, he wins some, he wins some. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, well, I won't go into that story because that could get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> Christiana, how about you with your neighbors? Yeah. And I'll talk about my neighbors. Um, I don't really know my neighbors that well. We actually kind of identify them by like what kind of dogs they have. So we actually have two beagles ourselves. And then next door, there's a corgi. On the other side, there's a German shepherd and I think another uh, another dog. And then down the street, there's like a golden retriever and another dog. Aww. And like, so <laughs> we have like a lot of dogs in our neighborhood, which is great because, you know, we're dog people. Um, but like our particular dogs are just very very loud, you know, so they bark every time they see a dog walk down the street. Um, and so that's quite frequently every day. So, um, but yeah, otherwise we don't really know the names of any of our neighbors. <laughs> we, we just know the dogs. <laughs> hmm, okay. Um, and I see a question came from Tony. Leah, are you out near Columbus? I'm about 30 minutes north of Columbus, yes. 30 minutes north, okay. Mm -hmm. My other neighbors have a band, but they practice with amps and a mic outside starting around 10 p.m. 10 p.m., really? They're outside doing mm -hmm. their... That's not cool. Um, 
for me, it's kind of a little bit of, uh, well, a little bit of everything that everybody said that, um, what, February of 2019, I think is when we had like two weeks of snow and ice out here, which is really unusual for Seattle. That is really bad for us. And um, so I was out shoveling our, um, our parking lot where I live. I live in a fourplex, so I've got a, a neighbor next to me and then two that are below me. And um, my one neighbor below me, it's a family, husband and wife and son, and saw me doing that. And so she was bringing me baked goods um, after I was out there shoveling the, the snow and stuff. And it was really good, too, mm -hmm. like cookies and cakes and stuff. And so mm -hmm. uh, and I told her that, too, I, I, how much I appreciated that. I wasn't doing that other than to try to make it so we get our cars out of the parking lot. But I so appreciated you, you know, giving me something nice. And I now know her name and I know her son's name. But I don't know her husband's name, <laughs> but, but I'll find out. I, I see him enough. They're super nice people. And I've always told them that because I play guitar and that kind of thing. I don't play it that much anymore, but I used to do that. I try to stop at nine. So and I have it as low as it's going to go. So I'm trying to be you know, respectful of my neighbors. Um, the guy next to me, um, he's a nice guy, but I don't know if there's something wrong with his door. Maybe I need to talk to him because you know when he's here and when he's leaving because he slams the door. Every, I've had people here that are like, Mark, what was that? And I was like, that's my neighbor's closing his door. And he's like a gorilla or something. And I don't, I don't know what the deal is with his door. And then I've got two, um, gosh, those guys must be in their 20s, two brothers that live in the kitty corner apartment on the bottom. And they're as quiet as a mouse. You never hear them. They're, I see them, they wave to me, that kind of thing. I know their names at least. But uh, the only reason that this question came up from one of the sites and made me think was that they always say that if you're in a, in a situation when you have um, an emergency and you need help, that it's going to be your neighbors that usually are the first ones that can help you. And if you don't know them, then that can be a problem um, if you're kind of doing your own thing and keeping to yourself. And I always kind of think about that kind of stuff because I'm not good about that. I, I really should know all of them better since we're all in the same unit. And mm -hmm. people, I know somebody who's over here who doesn't live near me, but I see him all the time walking his dog. So I'll talk to him. And I know his name, but I don't know the person <laughs> in my own unit. So it's just kind of a weird, you know, human characteristic, I suppose. And uh, Christiane, you kind of talked about, you know, people buy their dogs, but you don't know their names. And I'm kind of the same thing. Like, well, I recognize them. And I know they're nice, or I know so and so is not so nice, or whatever. But yeah, I don't know what I don't take the time and the initiative to um, try to instigate or start more conversation to really understand who my who my neighbors are. Because I like if you ask me what they do for a living, no clue, not a freaking clue. And if I would say the exact same thing about Mark, it's like, well, he's that bald guy, and he keeps weird hours, and sometimes he's got like camera gear with him, and then he's got a guitar with him, and we don't really know what he does, but he does something. Um, my next next door neighbor is like family. He saw me when I had issues. Okay, that's really nice. Um, cops know them well. Oh, for the, those people that play music outside, I remember I had the cops called on me when I was in a high school band. But that was that was us being stupid because it was the middle of the day. We're playing in my friend's garage, and I don't even know how we heard the knocks on the garage door. But eventually we did. We're like, what is that sound? So we stopped and put up the garage door, and there's two cops standing there talking. They got a noise complaint. Um, so I guess we were actually truly rock and roll at that point. Um, but me and my mom talk every day when they water the, when they water the lawn. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, if I go back to where my parents live, the neighbors that have been there for you know 50 years or whatever, they all know me and they remember when I was like you know a little kid and that kind of thing, seeing what I'm up to now and you know, how the parents are, my brother and that kind of stuff. So um, I kind of miss that. And I would actually think in the Midwest that maybe there would be more of that kind of neighborly stuff than maybe. Here I feel in the like, suburbs. I was going to say, I feel like even just my friends growing up, I was on like a, a road where I felt like everybody was um, like older. And then I had friends though that lived in neighborhoods and it was like neighborhood, it was like neighborhoods full of kids. And so like everybody kind of knew each other. Everybody's parents were friends with each other. They all, you know, talked on a daily basis. They would all just be outside. All of their dogs played together. And like, that's, like when you think of like oh a midwest little like suburban neighborhood and like yeah i never really had that honestly just because i i think a lot of like families didn't really buy their houses as close to like the super main road as where i was because it was pretty noisy but you know when you grow up next to it you don't think anything of it okay and then uh, leah i know you've got older sisters and then charlie mm -hmm. you just mentioned that you've got siblings and christiana do you have you've got I've, siblings i have one younger brother one younger brother okay do you get along with your siblings i got one older brother um kind of i mean 
we have different hobbies, <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, we had like a mini like get together barbecue last week, um, you know, like if he lives really close by, like maybe five, 10 minutes away. So like, it could just, it's easy to go back and forth. Okay, all right. Charlene or Leah, you get along with your siblings? I do. Um... They're all very uh, different to me. One's a zookeeper, one's a lawyer, and one is a like data, like coder tech person. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I'm an actor slash creative producer slash writer. So yeah, I feel like they've kind of fulfilled every possible niche <laughs> to like make my parents happy. So I'm like, that works for me. Um, but yeah, no, we, we get along really well. I feel like sometimes, like, if we were friends in real life, I just don't, I just don't know what we would talk about. Or like, it sort of sometimes feels like we have nothing in common aside from our childhoods. But that's also interesting, too, because I, I learn a lot from them. Okay, all right. And Leah? Um, I, neither of my sisters, actually, I'm the only one that's going to be left in Ohio in my immediate family, just in general. But um, they both live, um, one's in Colorado and one is in Connecticut. So pretty far from both sides. Um, and so when we see each other and it's like fantastic and we get along really well, um, when we were living together, it was not like that at all though. So <laughs> when you have sisters, it's just, you know, you, you steal stuff from each other. You, she, they stretch out your shirts and they, you know, they, they just, take stuff that belongs to you and then they say that they did and then you find it in their room and then you scream at each other and then you're like okay but are you coming down to breakfast yeah and then it's over so <laughs> it's like you get all the drama of you know being around a bunch of teenage girls but you know we're forced to get along in the end so it's it's definitely a lot better now that we're adults I think we all get along a lot more okay well I was thinking about <laughs> I was thinking about your fun table two weeks ago with Anissa when you're talking about your height. Um, are your sisters similar height or are they, are they tall? Oh, um, so uh, I think, well, I'm definitely the shortest. Um, they call me smalls. Um, I have one sister that I think she, she's more like average height, like maybe five, five or five, six. And then my other sister is probably closer to me, like five, three okay or five four something like that we're all like on the shorter side yeah and i i was just watching re-watching that when i was trying to um put that little video clip together for instagram from your from your your session i kept thinking about yeah you're talking about you're at the bar at your kitchen and you have to kind of climb yeah down. i sat on my that's why i sat on my couch because i was like when i was sitting up at the bar it's like anytime I have to get down for absolutely anything, it's like an adventure. I have to like jump down and like make my way to wherever I have to go. And then I have to c climb back up when it's time. So <laughs> how do you do with driving? Because I feel like when I, I'm quite short too, when I drive my car, I like have to pull the seat all the way in, but then it's so far in that I can't oh actually get gosh. out have to pull all the way out to like leave my car. Yeah, so my car has this thing where like it'll back up when it's 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 called I think like auto uh, auto something, and when you get in the car and you sit down and you start the car, it moves the seat up a little bit, and then when you're getting out of the car, it moves it back a little bit so that you have space. Um, but my mom, she always gets so nervous. She's like, "Your knees are right next to that steering wheel, and you're not gonna you're not gonna make it if your airbag hits you." And I'm like, "Mom, I can't reach the pedals. <laughs> it's this or I don't drive." Yeah, yeah. Or like if you're going out and you have like platform shoes on, and you're like, "Oh, this is what it feels like." Oh, this is where everybody <laughs> else is. Like a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, it's like I've given up on that now because I, I'm too clumsy for them. I, I used yeah. to wear heels all the time. I used to try. And now I'm just like, I just don't even care. Yeah. I wear boots a lot of the time when I go out. Yeah. Um, boots that were like this oh big. Gosh. But I used to end up wearing them a lot for puppetry because you have to, when you're like working with other people with puppetry on screen, you have to be the same height as everybody or else oh. it just doesn't work in terms of like you're just trying to frame out I never thought of that. 
here. So everyone's kind of standing with their arms up like this. And if you're like a lot shorter than everyone else, everyone else is going to have to like hunch awkwardly or you're going to have to like stand on a box. And if you need to move around, it just becomes impossible. So like you're, you're asked to bring like tall shoes. Oh my God. <laughs> sure. So yeah, we'll just be like walking around work in these like giant platform boots. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Very strange scenario. Yeah, I never even thought that that would be a thing. Like, who, yeah. who would have <laughs> I know, me too. And I was like, I feel like like I'm doing the walk of shame, like every day putting my boots on at like nine in the morning and just walking around in the daylight with these like yeah. strip heels on. <laughs> You're like, okay, it's here we are. Yeah, here it is. How did this come this is my to outfit us? for the day? This is my life. Yep. It's better stilts, I guess. So Yeah, kinda. Yeah. What what kind of puppetry were you doing? Um, what kind of show or what have you? Um, so we I did um this web series and like a pilot for it was almost like a teaser trailer for a feature, like a pitch kind of mm -hmm. teaser for a trailer. And then they also did a web series um of this show called Custard's World. So it was original to New Zealand. Muppet style puppetry, but kind of with a New Zealand twist to it. Um, so that was just like hand and rod stuff with like the mouth, and then you've got your two your two um, rods for the for the arm. So like pretty much Muppet style, um, and that that's been released on New Zealand on a New Zealand platform. But I don't know if you can get it online across the world. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember. Um early in the pandemic, I was watching something, um, the documentary about the guy that um, was the puppeteer for Big Bird on Sesame Street. Mm, yeah. And that was just really interesting and fascinating to see how much, uh, how much he loved, how much he put into that, mm. to, to create that iconic role. I just, I mean, as a kid, I just never thought about it. It's like, well, you've got him and Oscar the Grouch and stuff of love with this and, you know, all those characters. But then you realize how much without him, there is no Big Bird. There is no character because they, he was training his replacement, and it was like night and day. And even and even the replacement said that I don't know how I'm going to fill his shoes because I don't have his technique. I don't have his his emotion. I don't have any of these kind of things yet. And that's when the guy that was playing uh, Big Bird for all those years was saying, "Well, you're going to get there, but it's going to be your Big Bird. It's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. You know, it's not supposed to be yeah. me." Um, but that was just fascinating to watch. It's one of the few things. Um, what? What? I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm like, Someone's five. Oh, industrial girl's five seven. Um, I'm five five, so you're already taller than me. Industrial girl, you got a couple of inches on me. It wasn't the creepy marionette stuff then. Um, no, I hate marionettes. I, I find marionettes <laughs> really creepy as well. Like that, people. When I tell people I do puppetry as well, they're like, "Oh, like marionettes." I'm like, "No, it's <laughs> <laughs> away from me. The hideous." <laughs> no, I mean no shade if anyone loves marionettes out there, but they are not. They're not my steez. They, I do find them creepy. <laughs> I, I was just listening to some sports uh, radio here today, and they were talking about um, ventriloquism. And mm. some, see, some of these guys are about my age, so they're they're older, and they're talking. Remember that one film from the '80s called Magic? And I said, I remember that. Movie. That movie was freaking creepy as hell, and it was about you know the ventriloquist dummy coming to life and killing people or whatever. And there's something about some of those things that. Uh, that I still don't like. I don't, I don't want to ever be around it. Even if I know it's not real, it's fake, and yeah. there's a person's hand over here. Yeah. But it's still like, no, I'm good. <laughs> Just still the triggered, from... triggered by those images. Yeah, and, and I and I like horror stuff. I, I still don't want to deal with that. Um, but um, what are we talking about here? I think of Goosebumps when I think of those. Oh, yeah, the Goosebumps series. Yeah, those, those, those books. Those are fantastic. Yeah, those helped a lot of people read um, early on. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. This is kind of an odd. This is actually from last week, but I didn't ask this question to um, to Nicole or John. Where is the last place you would ever go? That could be all kinds of different answers, really. But oh wow! Yeah, where is the last place you would ever go? Garbage Island. Oh my God. I, I, I worked on a, I, so I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. But I worked on this cartoon series as an audio engineer in 2000 called Garbage Island. And 
I don't think we're talking about the yeah. same thing. I don't think we are either. But when you, as soon as you said that, I just had flashbacks to all these deadlines at midnight and trying to get all this audio done for this this cartoon web series in 2000 called Garbage Island. So anyone out there in the chat, if you're trying to dig up shit on me, there you go. You can probably try to find that. And I'll have a credit that says Mark Sugiyama as the audio engineer for, for Garbage Island. Uh, but um, yeah, anybody else have anything? Like, where's the last place you would ever go? I'm trying to think even for myself. Um, I think like I feel I feel like there's a lot of people who really enjoy breaking into like abandoned houses and factories because they like for the scare factor. Like mm -hmm. this particular friend of mine, she's a very a very like free spirited, quite quite like cheeky, mischievous person. And when I went to uni with her, she would frequently go and hang out and break into places that were sort of abandoned or a bit creepy, you know, like old train yards or, you know, X, uh, like, like abandoned like meat factories and stuff like that to just, just for something to do. And she would always tell me these terrifying stories about how, you know, they'd hear like chains jangling and then they'd like go down and there was like nobody there or like, they'd like break in and then like a door would open and they'd hear footsteps, but then like there would be nobody around and all these like just awful terrifying things. Oh my God. Just, like that is not my idea of fun. Like no I get scared by a bus in the night. Like I ain't about that life. So that would be the last place I would be. Oh, okay. I, I remember you actually mentioned that in the, the interview with Cole, that you were talking about how he loves horror stuff, but he would try to scare you or whatever. And you hate that kind of thing. So Cole was my best friend and my collaborator. So we made life as easy together and um, he's a lot of fun. And we are essentially the same person in a lot of ways, but not that way. He just loves horror and I hate it. And um, he would take every opportunity to scare the shit out of me when we lived together. Um, so yeah, just endless nightmares. We don't live together anymore for that reason. <laughs> No, I mean, you're married now, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Christiana, anything come to mind? Last place you'd want to ever go? And for uh, people in the chat, we're talking in general, yeah, not before you die. Yeah. Um, I'd like, I've always really liked horror stories and movies and like uh, watching other people play scary video games. But I am like, Charlie Ling, I'm like, I don't want to be in like a, you know, like a dark pitch, pitch black place, right? Where it's scary, like you can hear whatever sound effects or whatnot, and like you don't know what's kind of running around you or what's there. Like I'm also kind of arachnophobic. Um, I can I can admire spiders from afar, but if you put me into like a dark cellar, and like there's spiders like kind of crawling on you, <laughs> I'm like no. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I wake my husband up in the middle of the night if I see a spider crawling like in the room, like just it's just you know sitting there on the wall. And I wake him up at like three a.m. or whatever. I'm like, can you can you go get it? Go get it, please. Yeah, I can't. That's, that's that's part of the duty that you sign up for. That's just that's how it is. I don't I don't make the rules, but if you marry somebody that doesn't like spiders, you become the person that has to take care of the spiders. It's just exactly you know what you signed up for. Yeah. Um, yeah. But John is very, he's very sweet. He doesn't like killing things. So like when he does kill a spider, he says sorry to it, which is really, oh. really cute. Yeah. Nick usually tries to take them out in like a bundle. <laughs> he'll like bundle them up in like, I don't know, a toilet paper wad or something. And he'll try to take it outside and free it. Yeah. Yeah. I do that too. I prefer it, but I just, I'm like, I don't want to touch it. I don't, even if it lives, I don't want it just in here near me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I remember like the most butch thing I ever did was like, I was on like a second date with this girl and we went back to her place. And then like, as soon as we walked in the door, I was like looking around her place, she was showing me around. And there was this huge spider, like <laughs> giant spider, like just above her kind of doorway out into the patio and she was just like I was like oh you've got a spider and she was just like she just freaked she was like oh my god oh my god and she like spun around in circles and then she was like where is it where is it oh my god and so she <laughs> was like fully just freaked out and I don't really have a problem with spiders so I was like oh yeah and she was just like oh my god what do we do what do we do holy shit and I was like <laughs> I was just like okay so I was like it's all 
calm down. I go, went and grabbed a broom and I just like flicked it down and then opened the door and then just swept it out. <laughs> and she was just like, my hero. <laughs> I was like, wow, that was, that was really easy. That was such a big dick move. <laughs> I'm going to be riding on this for a while. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Well, I know um, my alter ego and Christiana knows this. She used to be called Seattle Next Door, which was my model photography name for seven plus years. I actually still, I've been doing some uh, photo shoots underneath that name still. And um, the location we were at two weeks ago, I don't know if it's because it, it's a, a college campus, so it's been closed because of COVID, that um, every freaking spider was everywhere that you wouldn't think it would be. And so you, you kind of know, like you kind of see like how the a building is structured that maybe they'll make a web there or whatever. But some of these things were like, I would walk right into something in the middle of nothing. Uh, it's like, oh my gosh. And, and the model was deathly afraid of them. So I was mm. trying not to play it up. Like, oh, mm. it, was, it, was, it was nothing. Just something with them. I don't have any hair, but it was something on my head or something. <laughs> just going to touch me. And then after a while, she kind of realized there's a lot of spiders around here, aren't there? Because you keep doing this, Mark. And I'm like, oh, it's oh, fine. God. It's no problem, but I must have ran into 15, 20 at least easily. So I had webbing on me and the spiders were crawling around the floor. And uh, Where were you? What was this place? This, so this was like a closed campus for a college locally. So it's been closed since March. Oh, okay, right. so, so people can still yep. be on there and they walk their dogs and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and it's actually got quite a bit of foliage for, for a college. You would think it wouldn't have so much, but there's lots of trees and shrubbery and that kind of thing but i even me i've been there before and um i was not expecting that we were trying to do these shots hey go stand by that rock and i had to kind of look to make sure there wasn't anything around her because then she would just freak out um so these these are the kind of things that like tony would know if he's still watching or listening to this that as another photographer that you just see the image and it's oh that looks so good it's like well you don't know what happened <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I went through. Yeah, I, 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 had, fate. I had to, um, you know, transport twenty spiders over to a safe area and try not to get webbing off of me. Um, but yeah, that guy that was crazy. And uh, but uh, she still wants to do some more stuff. So I just I, we won't be going back there. <laughs> we'll be going some other location. Would you say that that's your place that you don't want to go? <laughs> Right now, off the top of my head, yes, <laughs> that would that would probably be only because of that. I don't mind spiders myself. Obviously, I would have freaked out if I did. But um, I'm trying to think, we're also, uh, you know, I was watching this um, thing on YouTube with I think, I'm, I'm so sorry, I forget the, the actor's name, but he was in this movie called A Bronx Tale that Robert De Niro directed back in like 1994 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and Chaz Palminteri had done a play of it on like off Broadway or something. I, I love movie. that. Yeah, I love that movie. So the actor that played Collagido um, as, an, as a teen, not the young version of him, mm -hmm. there is an interview with him from like a year ago on YouTube, and it was a really, really good interview. Um, and he, he had some missteps, you know, because he was in high school when he got cast in that film. He had no acting background whatsoever. And um, uh, after many, you know, ins and outs and all that kind of thing, he got cast in the role. And then it started getting to his head because now he's known and famous and people want to be with him and all that kind of thing. And so he got messed up with drugs really, really bad. And um, it was just interesting hearing about his, his life story about uh, he ended up in prison for eight years um, because they ended up killing, he didn't, but his associate who was also messed up with drugs or what have you, ended up killing an off-duty cop. So to this day, there's still cops, there's still people that can't stand him because they associate him with that incident. But I think back when we were talking about this question, I've told my students this <laughs> many times. I know that if I ever did something ridiculously stupid or if I got framed for something and I ended up in prison, I'm too delicate for prison. I know I cannot hang with that. I can't deal with that. I have no problem telling everybody out there right now <laughs> that I cannot do that kind of thing. And listen to the stories from him being in there for eight years. And he's like, oh, ripped and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, goodness, no way. There's just no way. Because he also talked about he's Italian-American. So you've got the white folks, you've got the black folks, you've got the Mexican folks in many of the prisons. Where are the Asians? Who are your people that you can side with? You don't have that many. So I don't know what they do. Um, that would actually be one of my questions. If I ever interviewed that guy or somebody similar to him, that's what I would actually want to know in the American prison system. 
Um, cause mm-hmm. I was talking, I was, I was watching another one too, where this guy, um, Danny Trejo, amazing Mexican American actor. He went through juvie. He went through youth authority. He went through jail. He went through prison, but he was talking about, yeah, if you have your people, you're pretty much okay. If you don't have your people, you're going to have a rough time of it. And I'm like, yeah, who are my people? I don't associate with Mexicans. I don't associate with the white folks or the black folks. I'd be like a, an island unto my own with a few dozen other Asians. Yeah, so I, it's one of those main things of like, don't do things bad. <laughs> so I don't want to ever end up there. Um, so that would be my answer beyond, yeah, the spider <laughs> location from the photo shoot. I don't ever want to be there. Um, hey, Christiana, have you seen Arachnophobia? You remember that film? Oh, yeah. I've, actually, it's funny because I've seen it like, several times. But I, I do like that film. Um, it's very thrilling to me. And I will continue to watch it over and over and over again, because it's just so it's so campy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, doesn't make me more give me an affinity towards spiders, for sure. Well, I see Industrial Girl also talked about I hate roaches. I can't sleep if it's not caught. Oh, boy, I, I've got a story about roaches. Um, when we were, my family was uh, vacationing in Hawaii, and I don't know if this was the first, it may have been the first time we went there in like 1984 or 88, but um, my dad had befriended this really nice couple on the plane. They lived on Kauai, and they invited the whole family to come have dinner with them, so that was really nice of them. So we're in this rental car, my dad, mom, my brother, and myself, and uh, we go have dinner, have a great time, whatever. And I had been eating a bag of barbecue chips, and I left it in the back of the car. So we're in the house doing dinner, all that kind of stuff. We get back in the car, it's late at night, go drive back to the hotel or whatever. And you can just kind of hear something. You're like, what is that? And you, but you can't see it because there's no light on. And so I, I remember either my dad or somebody turned on like the light on the roof of the car inside to look down. And it was like a horror movie. There's like all these roaches around the oh. floorboards of the car. And they're huge in Hawaii. They're not like these little things. They're freaking like, they look like rats or something. They're really huge. So I was completely freaked out. Mm. Um, my brother was freaked out. We're trying to get our feet off the floor and everything. My dad doesn't know what's going on because he just hears screaming in the back of the car. And it was, yeah, a roach infested situation. And that's when I think we even found out later on. It's like, yeah, don't ever leave open food in your car in Hawaii because the roaches will just come looking for it. Wow. And uh, yeah, you don't need to tell me that. <laughs> we we saw it. It was ugh, that was nasty. So yeah, industrial girl. Imagine having a car full of roaches. That'll probably give you nightmares tonight. Um. <laughs> Anything with more than four legs is too many. Yeah, that was ugh, that was gross. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, let's see here. There, here's another question that I did not ask. I don't know if anybody has an answer for this. I don't even know if I do. If you could replace the handshake as a greeting, what interesting new greeting would you replace it with? It's kind of a COVID-19 question because people are doing the elbows and this kind of stuff. They're not actually shaking hands. That happened today to me. Hmm. I don't know if I have one for this. Yeah. I'm not this creating. I can't remember where it's from. I think, oh yeah, that's right. I think our prime minister called it the West Coast wave. Because um, a lot of, in New Zealand, a lot of Maori people will greet each other like, or just people in general will greet each other with like a sup like this. Mm. So it's like, instead of waving or touching each other, you can, you can just do this. Which works really well when you're wearing a mask as well. And you can't really show your smile, you just sup. Sup <laughs> nod. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a reverse nod. Like, okay. Tip of the chin. Just... That's kind of yeah. the, the person that I met today was trying to shake my hand, which is normal, you know, and I was I just did the fist bump kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said, oh, that's right. We're trying not to do that. Yeah. Tony just said that fist bump. Elbow. An elbow is good. Yeah. And um, um, oh, gosh, I thought I lost my train of thought. But I was looking at the, the things in here. And oh, I'm definitely afraid of snakes. I didn't do the shoot from Tony. But um, um, oh, and then. Dusty was talking about doing a, a chest bump. Yeah, I don't think you ever see me trying to do a chest bump <laughs> to, to anybody. Not talk about help, you know, comedy. Um, but yeah, what would I do for something being? It's, isn't it kind of interesting? Like if you're wearing your mask in these times, 
that you don't know. Like if you don't know somebody, it's not like your friend or your family member. You have no idea really what they look like. You just see the eyes and the nose. So like the person that I met today, I can see the rest of her, but I'm kind of like, does she have a nice smile? Does she not? Does she have like, you know, um, you know, really crazy teeth? Does she not have, you know, has a beautiful smile? I don't know. And same thing with me too. She, she can't tell. She doesn't know me um, until you do this kind of thing where you actually take it off. Um, because I started looking around at all the other workers where I was. I'm like, yeah, I wonder what that person, I'm, I'm just kind of weird that way. I started wondering about, what do they actually look like when they take this off? Mm -hmm. um, and it's strange that we're in this time where, yeah, you may not know what somebody looks like if they always have that mask on. It's a place, a grocery store you go to, or a restaurant you go to, or whatever, or, or just someone that you that you don't know. Um, fist bump. Uh, oh, that's what I was thinking about. So, like, Charlene, when you're talking about the, the kind of sup and what's 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 up kind of thing, mm -hmm. I used to work in South Seattle, which is considered kind of like a tough area here in Seattle. Um, a lot of gang infestation, and so the students that I worked with were 12, 13, and 14 years old. Which you think, well, that's that's nothing. They're still children, but um, a lot of them had like rap sheets a mile long for gang activity, and so the the whole thing with them was that if you ever did the, you know, the, the acknowledge thing, that was huge. You had to do that. If you just try to walk past a certain level of gang member, even if you weren't in a gang and you didn't acknowledge them by doing the kind of head thing, you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems really quick. And, and it was really interesting. And it was actually like block by block in South Seattle. It wasn't like if you went from South Seattle to West Seattle to North Seattle, like, no, no, you could get on Rainier Avenue. And if you don't at least acknowledge people at a bus stop or people that even I think, I think are gang affiliated, or if I see their flag hanging up their, off their, their pocket and just kind of do that, then they're cool. They'll let you pass. But if you don't, then they're, they're going to make an issue out of it really quick. And it's like, holy crap. And I, I come from the suburbs. I grew up in the suburbs. So this was all foreign to me. I had no idea. And uh, I actually learned a lot from my students from that kind of thing. It's like, Mr. S, we can't go over there. I'm like, what are you talking about? The park's over there. That's where we're going to go do our, our PE today. And they're like, we can't go over there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why? So they start talking about it. And then they also, the flip side of that is the first time I ever heard the term writer, like R H Y D E R. A lot of mm -hmm. rap and hip hop people, you know, so and so is a writer. Kind of means like you're down for life. <laughs> I was driving our students back from a PE session and they're like, man, Mr. S is a writer. And I'm like, is that good? Is that bad? What, 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 does, what does that mean? And they're just laughing at me because they know I'm kind of square like that. And I was like, look, I don't, yeah. I'm being honest with you guys. I don't know what this means. So educate me. You can be the teacher now. Tell me what this means. It seems to me just like you're, you're like an OG that's down with everything. So I mean, I was like, well, why did you say that about me driving us back from a park? I said, because you ran uh, what they thought considered a red light and it was yellow. That's why I was a writer, because I went <laughs> through a freaking yellow light, yes. getting them back to our office. Um, I don't know, all kinds of weird things that happened when I was, when I was working with um, the, the gang-involved uh, gang youth. Um, the prisoner had a salute kind of thing. He's very British from Dusty. Um, Tristan Riss does a lot of modeling with her pet snakes. Oh, yeah, I know. I've, I've been around Tristan was affiliated with the Solskis, uh, twist, uh Twisters <laughs> sisters. And uh, yeah, she loves her snakes and she's got like a, not a Komodo dragon, but something else in her home. She loves her, her reptiles and amphibians and all that kind of thing. So um, how are we doing on time? Because I know we're getting close to two hours and I know Leo, you got to go to work tomorrow. Charlene, you're yeah. in the middle of the afternoon. So should I try to finish it up by, by nine o'clock? So in like in seven minutes? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, all right. So let's see if we can find something goofy. Um, all right, so this is kind of typical, but if you won the lottery, which was $10 million, what would be your first expense? What would be the first thing you buy? I'd buy one of those fancy hand mixers that's like seafoam green. So that people, that they would just come in my kitchen and they'd go, this is a nice kitchen. <laughs> you know, those sea foam green, like, what is it, KitchenAid? Is that what it's like? It's yeah. like that KitchenAid, like, sea foam green hand mixer. When you see, you see that in somebody's house, you're like, this is a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to be sea foam green, right? It can't be any other color. It's got to be that. That's the best one. Okay. 
Anybody else? I see someone says I would remodel my house or a new car. It's coming through the chat. I'm thinking of buying a caravan to do up over the summer because we're going into spring right now and summer will be like December-ish and then I'll have some time off and like December, January, is January, February is uh, summer. Um, and because we can't travel, my partner and I have both been going back and forth between the States and, and here to do our film work and try and make contacts and we're both super gutted that it's looking highly unlikely that we'll head back over there anytime soon. So instead we're thinking of, but we were looking literally today of buying a, um, a van and doing it up like all hipstery and putting a bed in the back and having some drawers and some pullouts. And yes. some so I'm like, actually considering doing that. A little tiny house. What else am I going to do in the summer if not doing road trips, you know? Nowhere else to go except for my own backyard. Absolutely. Cool. 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 That, that sounds fun. Um, there's there's a show over here called um, Oh God, Counting Cars, where they they do a lot of remodeling and f fixing up of um, well, mainly um, old American cars, but they've done like RVs and things like that every now and then too. Totally trick them out. Um, and you both look into these, take something that was maybe they bought for a thousand dollars and turn it into something that's worth like one hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. The only reason that comes up in my head is I did an interview with that that owner at one point uh, during the Alice tour, and uh, the, they took um, it was like an old school bus that they completely <laughs> took out all the guts and put like they basically turned it into an RV with a kitchenette and a bathroom and everything inside of that thing. They put horns on the outside of it because that was kind of the personality of the person and all <laughs> kind of cool thing. So when you're talking about that, that's actually what I kind of flash back. You to. can buy those, yeah. They they've got those because um, I I have like a some I have like a minor obsession with like tiny living, and they have like you can find these like little tiny houses where you can just hitch them on the back of like a truck, and like travel around the whole. Well, I guess wherever you take a tiny houses. It can't be that easy to just actually pick up, pick them up and move in them because there's like appliances and things like that. But it's just fascinating. It's so, it's so crazy to like, I don't know, see all that stuff in it. And then they like, they unfold this table. They're like, it's also a bed. And you're like, how? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I see Dusty talking about, I just bought a new crock pot. It's really nice. I'm totally on board with kitchen appliances. Yes. Um, and uh, Christiana, anything come to mind? What you would purchase first? Um, I think the first thing that I really thought of was that I would want to actually take some time off from my day job and actually go back to school. So like, I've always wanted to study oh. something that was more like, and you know, I know Leah, you mentioned earlier and I see industrial girls talking about student debts and stuff like school can be so expensive. And I'm just like, if I had some, you know, extra funds lying around or something like from winning the lottery, that would be great to go back kind of like full time to really get immerse myself in, in the craft. So I was thinking of like illustration, for example, like I would love to do that, really learn that for a couple of years and get better at it. Hmm. Awesome. I'm so a 180 from that. Um, and I don't know if it's because I'm old uh, or, or what? I, I just kind of know I'm, I'd be a pretty bad student at this point. Um, and I don't have the patience for, it could be like the, the best teacher or professor in the world, you know, trying to impart their knowledge to me. And it would be completely my fault that I wouldn't take them up on it and open my mind to actually, you know, let that sink in. Um, when I was looking at this question, for me, it would be, well, making sure that I'm financially in the clear in a really good spot. So if there's debt of any kind, wipe that clean. Um, make sure that my immediate family is taken care of because they've helped me out so much over the years, just here and there and everywhere. And then, um, but in terms of actually buying something, <laughs> I'd probably actually buy like a laptop or something, which is really silly because I'm using my phone right now for this. I'm not using yeah, a computer. Really? Yeah. So you broke the rule. Yeah, so I don't have a laptop or um, a tablet or something. So yeah, Charlie, when we've done our interviews, it's been via my iPhone X 
S, I think this is, this model is, but so I, I, I think of it's that. It's done so well. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I have no complaints. Who, who knew that back in no, uh, November, back in January, when I upgraded to this model, you know, I think it's the 11, that um, how much I would, because I was going to need it because of the pandemic and everything else that happened because everything, like my, my laptop that's over here is old and has issues. Um, but um, I think I, I'm hearing my dad in the back of my head saying, because he's the practical one, saying, well, why don't you get out of that apartment and you know, buy some property and have a home? And that makes sense. You know, if I have $10 million and that makes sense, absolutely. Um, but I would still take my time with it. I wouldn't rush into it. Um, just like you know, buying a car depreciates, but I need a new car. So you know, I, I would make some practical things. But I think at the same time, <laughs> I haven't said that. I probably started looking at like vintage guitar websites to figure out what guitar could I buy that's like twenty thousand dollars or some ridiculous amount of money that I would never spend now. That you know, if I've got that kind of money, I'm going to buy that guitar because I've always wanted like my dream instrument, just so that I could have it. And um, well, and then Leah, you know, your husband is studio owner and musician and all that kind of thing, as well as yourself. That you kind of know once you get into the whole guitar instrument thing you can't stop oh, it snowballs because then you're constantly upgrading your gear and you're getting different things and better things and a new version of this and then because it's never like oh you have this it's like do you have the newest version of this it's almost like you know everybody every every year there's a new iphone so it's like you have to be up to date with every little like teeny tiny piece of you know equipment and it's it's crazy how much is out there. <laughs> like yeah. I don't know what I don't know half of the stuff that he uses or like how any of it works. He's like right now um, getting ready to uh, release a drum software that he just created, and he did all of the coding. He did all of everything, and I was like, I don't know how this works. <laughs> yeah, I, I think back to when I um, and this is a true story. I had got a guitar off of eBay that was sent to my work. And I was so excited because it was a model I've been looking for for a long time. Finally found it. Um, I needed to replace the strings and some other things on it because I was looking at it at work. And so I'm like, okay, I'll go to the guitar store at the time um, after work. And I go in there just telling myself, buy strings, buy this, buy this, and then leave. Don't try to look around because then you're going to get sucked into that whole world. And I, I remember I turned to my left and I saw a model on the wall that I had not seen before. I didn't know they had released it yet. And uh, is that a so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, so the, the worker's like, oh, yeah, we just got him in last week or whatever. So he pulls it off the wall. It was over after that point. So I literally have a guitar in my trunk that just showed up. And then I walk out with another guitar <laughs> from a store the <laughs> same night. So I got home with two guitars, um, which is just ridiculous. Uh, especially since I wasn't in a band at the time. I was just trying to play, um, just trying to play music. But um, yeah, I'm trying to see what other people have. Gretsch Hollowbody, um, a Brian Setzer guitar. Um, I'd be on Reverb. <laughs> I'd be on Reverb. That's a, a gear site for musicians, all that kind of thing. So um, let me ask one last question to kind of wrap this up, our, our first international edition of the Fun Table Sessions. Um, Somebody asked this in the chat last week, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase his, his, his question, but um, he asked something to the effect of, what do you feel was your, um, your, art, your artistic identity that got you to where you are now? And it was a really deep kind of question. He only asked it to the two guests. He didn't ask it to me. <laughs> But so if you think about all the things that you've been involved with um, and where you are now and where you want to go, um, how, how would you describe your artistic identity for people out there that you know, want to do what you do? That's a deep question. It is, <laughs> yeah. I, who I, am I? I? <laughs> yeah, I guess it, it is so intrinsically tied to self because as artists, I think either you're going imaginatively and going outside yourself or it's kind of coming from within. For me, I feel like most of my best ideas come from a place of honesty that are sort of been extrapolated into a, a world of imagination. Um, 
I feel like my artistic ident identity is really based in my community and in my cultural identity as an Asian New Zealander. Um, whether that be directly with works directly based on race or not, I think being a biracial, um, a biracial person that's grown up in New Zealand. I, my dad's Chinese and my mom is from Christchurch. She's Irish. Um, I think that has given me a real interest in the liminal space between things and the kind of gray area of identities and um, philosophies and politics. So anything that's kind of like amorphous or in the middle or like contentious or anything I don't really have a solid answer for, I think that's that's the area of story that I'm kind of really interested in. I'm not really interested in black and white um, stories where you kind of come out the, the other end and you go like, yep, I've got a definitive answer. It's more like creating works that create more questions for people. That's sort of what my artistic identity is based in, I think. Okay. Wow. Leah or Christiana, I get, yeah, like, like Charling said, that's a really deep question. Has anybody got anything that they can add from the top I of their head? I feel like who I am as a creator is just ever changing. Um, even uh, looking back to the beginning of this year, I mean, this year has shaped all of us in a crazy way. And I think every year we get shaped in a crazy way and we just don't realize it. And I think that, you know, looking at myself as somebody who is creating, I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that I don't think I really have like one solid thing that's always been kind of like a driving factor for me. I mean, I'm, I've always obviously loved to sing and and to create and so on and so forth, but I, I think I'm constantly in a state of changing and trying to create new things that I haven't done before. Um, and I know that musically, a lot of times people kind of frown on that. They say like, oh, you know, when people change, they want to go back to, oh, I miss when this band sounded like this. I miss when this person used to create things more like that. And what I think a lot of people don't really take into consideration is that, yeah, we, we created that, but now we're done creating it because we did it. And I think um, I'm just, I'm always, always kind of looking for the metamorphosis of what comes next and what I'm interested in doing next. And so I don't, I don't necessarily think that I have like one specific kind of identity type thing that I can really say has like shaped me into this. I think it's been a lot of identities of who I've been over the past and just a constant state of trying to improve the things that I've created and the person that I'm being. Okay, well said. Christiana? Yeah, um, I think my style is very much rooted in like darkness. I actually like writing um, a lot of darker stories with twists that have a lot of introspection um, in those stories, a lot of symbolism, just because I've had very uh, quite a few experiences in my lifetime where I was not in a good spot. And so like I pull and draw from those experiences quite a bit. Um, and so when I, you know, write lyrics to a song or I'm working on a story, um, thinking of, I don't know, even like a logo or something for some, something that I'm working on. Like I try to have multiple layers to uh, that story, to those lyrics or whatnot. So it has multiple meanings that can be interpreted differently by people who are listening to it or viewing it, you know? So um, cause I, I think that's what I, really like to do is to build stories, create create songs that might resonate with someone else um, and help them in, in turn. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, I, I remember again, last time the, the person that put this question in the chat, he directed it at the guests and then I just kind of made a half 
half-assed joke about, oh, I guess I don't have to say anything. And then he's like, oh, no, I'm sorry, Mark. I wanted you to ask, answer it, too. And um, it is such a hard, deep question about artistically where are you at or what is your identity because my kind of like what Leah was saying, my identity has been built upon different identities prior to it, and they're continually changing and evolving and adding different things to it. I mean, if someone had told me three or four years ago, Mark, you're going to be um, – a credentialed interviewer for the Seattle Opera, I would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, that, that, has, that had nothing to do with anything I was interested in, anything I wanted to do. Same with the Pacific Northwest Ballet, who's one of the premier ballet companies in the United States. Um, but as I opened my mind and I started looking down this different path of artistic expression, I started understanding that this is something I would like to find out more about. And then once I'm there, then I'm gone. I'm going to go down that hole forever. And the more holes that kind of get brought to me or brought to my attention, um, then the more that I want to kind of pursue them. And at some point, I, I've had people ask me about, um, well, why don't you just focus on one area? Why don't you focus just on music and concert photography, reviews and interviews? And to me, it's like, well, that's like saying that's all you do on your day to day life. I don't just do that um, in terms of like, listening to music. I want to watch film or I want to watch theater or I want to watch dance or I want to watch the opera or hear things. So it's more of like there's so many other avenues out there, you know, pre-pandemic and hopefully post-pandemic that I have not been a part of. And I want to take that in. I want to understand what all of that is and I want to fold it into what Eclectic Arts does. Um, I've mentioned this before that I never want to feel like well, we only do this, you know, that over there, you know, fire breathing or something else that's, you know, artistic related. We don't touch that. It's like, no, I want to go, I want to go pursue it. I want to see what's over there because I don't know anything about it. So there's a, a way to educate myself. It's a way to open my mind about certain things and um, kind of see how does it fold together. Look at the fact that we have, you know, somebody from Seattle, someone from Ohio that I saw on YouTube, and someone from New Zealand in this table right now that pre-pandemic, I don't think this would have happened because people would be doing different things. That's a Friday night. For all I know, in, well, September it wouldn't have been Labor Day, but maybe I was at a concert. Uh, maybe someone's on a set. Maybe someone's having a barbecue because, you know, you, you don't have to worry about COVID. But this whole thing has kind of brought different creative people together, and not just creative people, but people here in the um, in the chat as well that um, – I don't, I don't think I ever want to think in terms of limits, ever. Um, it's always about what else can I do, what else can I push out into, and um, also knowing myself well enough that when you've pushed enough, you need to take a break <laughs> and kind of um, you know, regroup and then get that energy back together and then push again. Um, there's definitely a, you know, two sides of this coin. Um, evolution shows growth and intelligence. Well, yeah, that's true, Tony. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, I have, again, I've had some photographer friends that are like, they're dying right now because they don't have any concerts to shoot. I was like, well, what else can you shoot? Well, I go shoot buildings and plants and animals and stuff. Well, what else could you do? You're a creative person. You don't have to be doing photography. You could be doing something else. Mm -hmm. they, they, they choose not to do it. So it's like, well, that's you. I choose to move on to other things and um, kind of see where it goes because... Right now, we all hope that by this time, so if it's September 2021, that we're back to some sense of live events and everything else that we know. But we don't know that. We don't know that for sure. So what are you going to do? And uh, I hate that phrase of adapt or die, but I think there's some semblance within that that actually makes sense that you have to kind of look at what else are you going to do um, and kind of move on from there. So. Yeah, this has been an interesting, fun table. Hopefully it was interesting to other people and to the guests. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's, we've been two hours and 14 minutes. Goodness. Um, I enjoyed everything that everybody had to say. I'm so glad that Chai Ling and Leah and Christiana that you took time to talk to me and, and do this whole thing because, it can, again, it can kind of go any which direction. It's not like a formalized interview where I kind of know where things are kind of go. This can go in all kinds of different directions. I think there was some fun stuff. I think there were some really interesting and thought-provoking things that were said. And um, hopefully people feel, not only with the guests, but also here in the chat, that uh, you feel a little bit more connected to um, 
to the people that were here. So um, since I can't review live shows, I just choose my music stuff and write about. And then my oh, my mom just gave us the thumbs up. So okay, I, I guess that's <laughs> that's all we need to know. My mom says thumbs up, so we must be good. Um, but I, again, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us, the guests, the people in the chat. Um, here in the U.S., you've got Labor Day weekend, um, Dusty Chalk. I'll get that Blu-ray out to you. Uh, Chai Ling, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. <laughs> um, and Leah, hopefully you get a chance to get some sleep so you have to go to work tomorrow. And then Christiana, you and John and the Beagles, maybe you still got more to go because it's only 9.15 for you and I. So you're going to you know, tank up again and go another round, but hopefully not have it maybe live stream for other people to watch and listen to. Um, but again, thank you so much for taking the time, everybody. Have a, a, a great weekend and stay safe out there. And um, for those that want to tune in again, I will see you next Saturday at noon Pacific time when we go to Germany and we have a couple local Washingtonians joining the group. So, and there's Leah's band, Leave Earth. That's exactly how you, you, you spell it. So um, take care, everybody. And I will hopefully see you soon. Thank you. See you. <laughs>